So Domino, we're just uh, testing sound here. Okay. All right, sounds good. And uh, I see it's recording, so we'll be able to save the recording of this, I assume. Perfect. Okay. Um, we'll see um, who starts to join us here as far as the, the speakers. Um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and, and uh, intro and kind of move through. Um, and you have the schedule as far as the, the way things are going to progress. So um, if you have any questions, just, just let me know as we go along the way. But I, I really appreciate you uh, uh, staying with us here to, to make sure that this all goes off smoothly. <clears throat> Oops, um, that worked well. I got the little notice. I started restarted the video. You hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay.
Okay. Hey, this. Hi, Chris. About a heart, bro. Hi, Chris. Oh, I'm very happy. Nice to see you. Where uh, I have a couple of people joining me. Yeah, this okay. Uh, we can't hear you so well. Oh. Uh, is that any better? Um, well, it's better because you're closer, I think. Okay. Can you hear us, Prabhu? Hare Krishna? Yeah, we can hear you great. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Nice to Hare be. Krishna. Oh, Hare Kosha, Hare. my dear. Hare Krishna. So nice to Hare see Krishna. you. So nice to see you all. Thank you. Is this good? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're just uh, we're just going to a few things just uh, finalized here. Uh, Damodar is our technical person, okay. and um, he he may chime in here if he needs to make any adjustments. Okay. So, so um. Uh, Damodar, I was just saying that uh, about a high Prabhu's sound, maybe we can do a sound check real quick. Uh, sure. Uh, go ahead and uh, just say something so we can hear you. Oh, hello, hello. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We'll play harmonium just Hare, Hare. Hare. I'm going to play harmonium. <laughs> Kosha, what deity is that behind you? Uh, it's our Lakshmi Nishringa and Panchatattva from Laguna Beach and the Maha Mantra. Mm -hmm. Jai, yeah. Jai, 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 Jai. Did, it, did that sound okay to you? Yeah, it sounded okay um, coming through. It, I mean, barring, get, like you said, getting closer, there isn't a whole lot I can do for it on this end. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, so so we'll go with that. Um, uh, we'll we'll get started here in just one minute. Um, so so basically the way the way this will operate, the best that, that I know how to do this from a from a virtual standpoint, is uh, everyone will be muted. Um, what is your time to come on? We'll unmute you, uh, and we'll invite you to to speak. Um, and uh, and then when you're done, we'll handle we'll handle the the muting unmuting on on this side, right, Damodar? Uh, yes. And are we are we set up for to automatically mute as people come into the call? Yes. Yeah. So we're we're all set. So it is it is now five o'clock, and uh, um, we're going to start on time. Actually, we're going to we're going to set a a new standard here. <laughs> in honor of Bhakti Chumaraj, we're going to actually start a, a discount event on time. Um, it's uh, it, it's our pleasure to have you here. Um, this is the Iskhan Alachua uh, Memorial for His Holiness Bhakti Chumaraj Swami. Um, uh, it's great to have everyone here. I wish we were meeting together under different circumstances. Uh, I'm, I'm deeply grateful for everyone's willingness to, to join us and participate tonight. Uh, as we um, get to honor uh, His Holiness Bhakti Tru Swami, my Gurmash, um, 
and uh, we, we have quite a few speakers lined up and um, I'm really looking forward to just, just hearing from everyone and uh, really deepening my feelings and understanding uh, of Bhakti Truth Swami through, through this humble offering. And uh, I, I hope that, that what we're doing here is, is, uh, is, is worthy of, of, uh, of him and, and what, everything that he, he gave to us. And so uh, um, before we kind of get started here, uh, we, we will kind of, uh, as, as we flow through the evening tonight, uh, I, I don't want to forget to thank Damodar for, for joining us here to handle all the technical aspects of this. Uh, we could not do this without him. Uh, and so I just want to make sure up front to, to, to thank him for, for uh, putting everything he has into getting all of this together for us so we can uh, meet together. Um, and so uh, well, we'll start tonight, the basic agenda of the evening is uh, Badahari Prabhu has kindly uh, offered to, to sing a very special song that I think we will all recognize uh, as, as, a, as a tune, um, as, as a particular song. We, we, we probably first heard from Bhakti Tru Swami actually singing it. Um, and so I thought it would be something uh, that, that we would all really, really like to start things off with here tonight. Once uh, that is done, then we, we have a, a, a large lineup of speakers. Um, and uh, uh, that'll, that'll run until about 7.45, actually, based upon all the speakers that we have. Uh, Prangovinda Prabhu, who uh, was uh, uh, in Orlando with uh, Bhakti Chu Swami, um, is actually going to speak a little bit about um, his departure. And uh, he'll, he'll do that at 7.45. And then um, uh, we have a special budget uh, that uh, uh, Prabir Prabhu will actually be singing for us at the, at the end of the evening tonight. Um, of course, I, I know this is long. Um, if everyone can't stay, that, that's, that's you know, certainly not expected that everyone has to remain the entire time. Um, stay as long as you can. Uh, we certainly appreciate having you here. Um, this is recorded, so we will have an opportunity to, to see it again uh, um, in, the, in the future. Um, and so if you do have to leave early, we'll, we'll have that recording as well. And so uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Badahari Prabhu. Um, uh, when, I, when I first uh, came to Krishna Consciousness in Laguna Beach uh, back in 88, I think, um, Krishna and Badahari were, were uh, um, uh, just our, our spiritual shelter there. They're our, our, our foundation. And um, uh, I have so many memories with Bhakti Chumash when he would come to Laguna Beach and, and uh, the time he would spend with uh, Badahari Prabhu and Mother Kosha. And uh, in particular, I remember when he first asked Badahari Prabhu to start teaching him how to play harmonium. Um, it kind of kicked things off a little bit. And so um, uh, this is very special for me to, to have you here. And so, so thank you. Thank you for joining us. Unmuted? Yeah. Yes. yes. Unmuted. Um, I'd like to begin with Mangala Charna. That's always a nice place to start. And then we'll do the prayer. Thank you. Yeah, I was been remembering those Laguna days also. Om Jnana Tvarandasya Gadanjana Shrakaya Chakshura Minitandena Tasmasi Purvenama Shri Chaitanya no Vishnu Snapitam yena bhutale Svayam upadakramaya Tati svapadantikam Handeham shiru Shiru tabara Vaishnava <laughs> Arijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam 
Thank you so very much, Mother Kusharupa and Gormani and uh, Gita. Thank you so much for 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 being here and for 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 offering this. I look forward to actually hearing more from you a little bit later tonight, um, as uh, as we have you scheduled to to speak a little bit later on. Um, so uh, next, I'd actually like to invite uh, Tamahar Prabhu. He's going to start off uh, our remembrances uh, this evening, and uh, he'll be followed by Mother Mukya. Okay, can you hear me now? Is it all right? 
Okay, because it had the mute on before. All right. Hare Krishna. Namo Bishmaraya Krishna Stavadari Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namasi Sasvadim Gauravani Bhutani Nivishesha Shingavari Pasjit Vari Sitarani. Obviously, tonight we're here to honor a very, very great Vaishnav, the passing of a great Vaishnav. And this brings out a lot of emotion for many of us. Of course, any devotee's passing is a loss, and we always feel that. We've been getting more and more lately, more and more of our God brothers, God sisters, and others have been passing. But I think Bhakti Tru Swami's passing is very impactful for many, many people. Maharaj touched the lives of thousands and thousands of devotees, thousands of disciples, but also God brothers, uh, spiritual nieces, nephews, everywhere throughout the world. Um, he was just an absolutely exceptional Vaishnav, and um, it, it, we all are feeling his passing very, very strongly. And of course, under the circumstances of passing from the coronavirus, coronavirus is, um, I don't know, I guess even more poignant, more, um, more difficult, but it, <laughs> and it has its own warnings for us there and its own lessons, but we don't want to go in that direction, because in whatever way Krishna decides to take back his children, that is up to him and not us. And um, we always say this, and almost sounds trite, we went back to Godhead, went back to Krishna. I just have to say, for whatever my <laughs> spiritual worth is, which isn't a lot, I am 100% absolutely convinced that Bhakti Sri Swami is now with Krishna. And um, Krishna has called him back. And um, I had this realization in those last couple of days that it probably was an internal struggle going on where I believe Bhakti Shru was ready to go back, Krishna was ready to take him, but he was being held by the prayers of thousands and thousands of devotees. At any rate, Krishna made his decision and took Bhakti Shru Swami back with him. And that's really the way that we have to see it. It's it's always bittersweet. We always say the passing of a Vaishnav is, is like that because in one sense, it's wonderful that he now gets to be back with Krishna. What's not so wonderful is the rest of us that are left with the loss, which are left with our mourning for losing a wonderful devotee and a wonderful friend to all of us. Um, I would like to particularly offer condolences to his disciples. I believe we have four in Alachua. Um, of course, Vishwambara Prabhu, who has helped put this all on, which I think is just amazing. And given this must be an emotional, difficult time, I, I'm, I'm so appreciative for Vishwambara to, you know, be doing this and, and running this and making sure everything is happening as he does with everything. So thank you, Vishwambara Prabhu. Also his wife, uh, Vrindavaneshwari Prabhu, and also uh, two other disciples that are here, uh, Krishna Priya, Devi Dasi, and Braja Rajaraja Sutta Das. Uh, so they are our community members. We certainly offer our condolences to them and any help, anything that we can do for you, we certainly will. Also, uh, since uh, Maharaj moved to uh, his Delan project in Florida, we got to see a lot more of him. A lot of the devotees in the area did. In fact, I know because I was in communication with him, there was uh, several devotees in Tampa who were aspiring to take initiation. And I was supposed to give a disciples course to them so they could take that initiation. I, I don't know if any of them were able to or not, but that's a loss also. And we, we certainly pray that they all get through this all right. And I'd like to offer a, a, a special condolence and prayer to my dear, dear friend and my uh, dear doctor, uh, Prabir Prabhu. Uh, um, Prabir is, a, of course, a wonderful devotee who would have take, soon taken the initiation from, from Bhakti Tru Swami. Um, in fact, that was I was so fortunate because the last time Bhakti Tru Swami was here in Alaska a few months ago, it was actually just before the COVID shutdowns, I was honored to be asked to uh, come to lunch with him a couple of days at Prabir's house. And so that was, a. I feel that was so wonderful and special that I did get some recent association with him. So in that respect, this has been a, this has been difficult for me. Not all passings are as much, but I, I personally have found this very hard and that uh, it, it was very, very meaningful to me. Um, I just had that sort of, you know, respect and fondness for Bhakti Tru Swami. It's, uh, of course, he brought that out in many people, probably 5,000 devotees would tell you the same thing, what a special dear devotee he was to them. 
Um, I was had the opportunity to work at Black Juice Fund for maybe the 12 years that I was in the GBC until I recently retired. You know, so twice a year we would all get together and amongst, you know, the 32 of us or whatever. So I, I did get a lot of association with him. And um, I was always impressed with certain things. And I'm sure that these are themes you're going to hear over and over tonight. Because with Bhakti True Swami, he was one of those advanced devotees that there wasn't a private and a public. There wasn't a, oh, sometimes the access way, sometimes. The, no, he was always the same, at least my experience with him. He was always a very advanced devotee, always Krishna conscious, always a gentleman, expert in Vaishnav etiquette. Just amazing the way he would care for devotees, the way he would treat and serve devotees, humble. You'll hear this, I'm sure, from many devotees. His humility was amazing. He had thousands and thousands of disciples. I don't know how many thousands of disciples he has, but you would never know it if you were just sitting down and talking with him. He was he he sort of, even though he was very educated, very learned, he sort of presented himself as just a humble, simple devotee, which is remarkable, you know, given how much worship he was given and applause all over. Um one of the things that's most important, and I think he should remember, be remembered by, is that he was a very, very great devotee and disciple of Srila Prabhupada. He always spoke about Prabhupada. He always glorified Prabhupada. He always, he was 100% loyal to Prabhupada's ISKCON movement, and he wanted everyone to have that same mood. I remember one of the first um, initiation lectures I heard him give. He was telling his, his disciples, at least when I heard, he said, they're not just his disciples. They're initiated into ISKCON. They're initiated into the Vaishnava, into Prabhupada's line. They're initiated into this whole line of Vaishnava acharyas. And, you know, so he had that mood that he was a messenger. It, he didn't take this for himself. He was Prabhupada's ambassador, Prabhupada's, you know, um, you know Prabhupada's disciple and simply bringing devotees to Prabhupada. And uh, he always had this mood. And so therefore, I mean, no one was ever envious of him. Everybody loved him, you know, because he was like this. Um, I, 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 of course, it's, I think, I think Shesha told this story the other day, but I asked him once when I talked to him, I said, is it true I heard that you got all three initiations, first, second, and sannyas all at once when you first met Prabhupada? He said, he was very humble, but no, 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 no. He says, yeah, it was some time. Well, I found out later it was immediately got first and second and a couple months later he got a sannyas. So, you know, he, he kind of downplayed it, but it's a fact that this is this is how Prabhupada perceived him. I mean, if you want an endorsement that Srila Prabhupada immediately saw the qualities in him and, and initiated him uh, up to immediately giving him sannyas. And so th this was the type of type of caliber of devotee that he was. Um, he always put Prabhupada at the center, as I said. Um, and he was a very intimate disciple of Prabhupada. Uh, every, many, many people know that in the last days, the last weeks of Prabhupada, Bhakti Jiva Swami was one of his main servants, one of the main uh, secretaries who was there with him up until the end. And, you know, and he got many wonderful instructions from Prabhupada, of course, and uh, some of them, many have been quoted, like I believe it was Bhakti Jiva Swami that Prabhupada at least once said, you will show your love to me by how much you cooperate together to spread this movement. I mean, that was one quote that, you know, the memorable thing that, that Prabhupada said to Maharaj. Another one I remember that struck me was he said this once, and I've mentioned this before, but just to make sure, I, I twice asked him personally about it. I said, now tell me exactly what Prabhupada said here and what you said. And he repeated, he was talking to Prabhupada and Prabhupada probably in his last week of his life, and Bhakti Goswami was saying is, I know you want us to push on the Varnashram movement. And Prabhupada said to him, Varnashram is for the outsiders, not for the devotees. I thought that was rather remarkable, <laughs> you know, just to add to the controversy on Varnashram. But this is one of the last things Prabhupada said. He said it to Bhakti Tri Swami. Bhakti Goswami repeated, I, I asked him twice at least to repeat it verbatim. That's what he said. So I thought that was very interesting. And I, I don't know how many more, maybe other devotees who are speaking will know other pastimes he had with Srila Prabhupada. I wasn't around during those times. I don't really know them as well, um, how he related with Srila Prabhupada, but I know it was very, very close and very meaningful and very, very sweet relationship. Um, Maharaj was always concerned about devotees, devotee care, devotee relationships. This was first to him. 
Um, we know he was a perfect gentleman. He always, you know, treated everybody so nicely. He wanted to make sure that you were taken care of, that you were served. Uh, he had a, a room in, or a nice suite, actually, in Mayapur. And during our meetings there every year, you know, a few times during the meetings, he would have a lunch prepared. When he had a lunch prepared, that doesn't mean, you know, you cook, had a japati and a subji. It meant, you know, a 12-course <laughs> feast. And he had wonderful cooks. He was a wonderful cook himself. Prabhupada personally taught him to cook, you know. But he had wonderful cooks with him. And many, many people uh, would be invited. And I remember that uh, I was invited frequently. And I was surprised that we weren't that close. I wasn't a big shot. I was, a, I always thought I was one of the new guys, one of the less significant GBC members, but he never discriminated. He invited the householders, the ladies, as well as the sannyasis. And we'd just all be together with him, uh, taking prasadam. And that was always very nice. And he was always very concerned that everything was done properly according to Vaishnav etiquette. He knew all the rules about what should be eaten first and with what and all those sorts of things, you know, which I have no clue about. No, that was really nice. He was also very, very expert, not just at philosophy, which he knew thoroughly, the philosophy, the verses, any point he could talk about. But he also knew the Gaudiya Vaishnava history. You know, anything that would come up, he would know about, oh, he was a, a disciple of Bhakti Siddhantas and this and that. You know, I mean, he just knew it all. Um, you know, everything, everything about uh, the, the local area of Bengal, of course, anything about the devotees, the disciples, everything about Bhakti, uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Of course, he did the Abhicharan show, and I'm sure that required a tremendous amount of research. One of the, um, I guess you could say, benefits to the um, distancing we've all had to be doing during this COVID is that um, staying home a lot, I had never actually watched the Abhi Turan series. So my wife and I sat down, we watched the whole thing over several nights. And it's kind of addictive. You don't think about binge watching, you know, we just watch one, one after another until it was time to time to take rest. It was, I, it was really interesting and, you know, well done. And I learned a whole lot about it, especially about Prabhupada's early life, Bhakti Bhakti Bhaktivinoda. That so, um, and that was a tremendous work. You know, that he, uh, I, I was noticing on the titles, a lot of times he was the director, the producer, and the writer of some of the early episodes. So he put so much of his heart into the glorification of Prabhupada. And this is just something that he always did. Again, concern for devotees. I remember once, you know, there was something, might have been a misunderstanding or something during a GBC meeting. I don't even remember what it was, insignificant. But he came to me, you know how he is, he kind of holds your hand. And he just want to make sure everything was okay, that we had a good relationship understanding. He said, of course, Maharaj, you know. And but he was like that. He was just concerned about people and relationships, and he always wanted to do the right thing. Final thing about his sort of Vaishnav etiquette is we had one uh, GBC meeting in Ujjain, which of course is his sort of home temple, his home ground. And at first I think some of us were skeptical, Ujjain out in the middle of nowhere, what's that gonna be like? Well, was, I think it was the best meeting we ever had. I mean, it was just wonderful in terms of the facilities, the guest house, the service, everything. Of course, we blew out all electricity, you know, with all, everything that we were doing. We were down for about a day in this small town. But uh, at any rate, it was, again, it just his care and his concern that everything was done nicely. He, he just, he wanted to do this as a service to the Vaishnavs. So, so and also the thing is, it's not that, Bhakti Swami was actually, fun. He was enjoyable. He was not just some stuffy person quoting verses, not that quoting verses is stuffy, but you know what I mean. I mean, in other words, you know, he would, he had stories. They were just interesting. I remember once uh, years ago, one of the first times I was talking to him, I was in lunch, you know, at a lunch table with him. And he was telling me, I don't know how we got talking about cobras in India. He was telling me about how he saw like, a fight between a mongoose and a cobra and how the mongoose had killed the cobra. <laughs> I mean, it's like, just things like that. He was just, um, but he always had a Krishna conscious perspective. He could, you know, it's like Prabhupada, he could talk about anything, but he was always Krishna conscious, you know, and uh, while he was doing that. Uh, so anyway, I, I really enjoyed being with him as a great friend, as a great devotee, and as obviously a senior mentor, someone I could look up to and learn from. I was thinking the last time that he was here, and I'll end with this, the last time he was here in Alashua, as I said, I was fortunate to be able to be invited for lunch when he was over at um, uh, uh, Prabir and uh, Jai Gurangi's house. And um, yeah, I was sitting next to him during the lunch and, you know, we talked a lot. And actually, I think it was two lunches in a row, two days. And kind of at the end of it, he turned and he said, Tamil Harpu, he said, 
you know, all the times we're on the GBC, it's almost always business and, you know, management. He said, this has been so nice just for us to be friends and getting to know each other and enjoying our company together. And that really touched my heart, you know, because I, I felt the same way uh, that we both had that. And I was thinking, hey, he's in Deland now nearby. I'll develop more and more relationship. You know, it's going to be so nice getting to know Maharaj in this way now that I'm not on the GBC anymore. But that was not to be because Krishna chose to take him now. And so, you know, I am left here beating my head. Uh, those of us who are left behind are feeling sorrow that we won't have his wonderful association. And uh, we will be missing growing and developing that wonderful friendship with him. But as I said, I am 100% convinced he is now with Krishna and who knows. So thank you so much. All glories to Bhakti Chiru Swami. Hare Krishna. Oh, it's my turn. Thank you, Tamahar. That was so beautiful. This is what I'm looking forward to the most this evening is learning more about Maharaj. So um, I just want to say thank you for asking me to say a few words. It's an honor to glorify such an exalted and pure devotee of Srila Prabhupada and Lord Krishna, although I, I didn't know His Holiness Bhakti Chiru Swami that well, but even just from the contact association, like hearing him give classes or I, you know, reading his memory books, his memories book, um, I was just always inspired by his gentle ways and his soft heart. And as it happened, I was asked to deal or to help deal with some problematic issues at two different temples uh, over the last three or four years. And Bhakti Shri Swami was somewhat involved with each of those two places. So my experience of discussing these issues um, with him really changed my own perspective on the problems. He thinks in a broad way rather than a sort of tunnel vision where one sees only the cause and the effect. His thinking was nuanced and he saw an individual's life of service like the good things they may have brought to Srila Prabhupada's movement and to other devotees also. And he considered all of that in how to choose to deal with um, that, you know, what the problematic situations were. He, he didn't deny the problems, but it was very helpful to me to see the way he thought. He was really heart-centered and how it looks when you bring that kind of thinking to a problem. So I would say he changed my thinking in a positive way. And I felt really grateful that I was able to work with him on those issues, even briefly. I wanted to say to all of his disciples that I understand the pain of this loss for you. And I do believe you will always have the loving support of the whole ISKCON family, especially Maharaja's worthy God brothers and God sisters. And there are some amazing times ahead for you when the magic of Guru Kripa will manifest to, your, to you palpably, even when your spiritual master is not manifest any longer. You'll see how the Krishna magic deepens. So I just say, please continue to take shelter, to pray for his guidance, to learn from him through all the words that he's left behind for you. And I just want to end, say His Holiness Bhakti Tru Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nite Namane Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravai Vachane Nirvishesha Srinivari Pashtachi Vesitane Panchakapa Tru Vyascha Kriva Sindhu Vyavacha Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity <clears throat> to say a few words in glorification of Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. It's been quite um, draining up and down last two weeks um, with Marge's condition in the hospital. But I concur with Vokya and Tamahar that Marge's destination is clearly Goloka Vrindavan and Srila Prabhupada and Krishna. And so we reflect on him from that perspective. I'd like to say, and it's a claim that I hope Marge wouldn't be offended by, 
I'd like to say that Bhaktichu Swami is my friend. Now, I, I don't mean to be proud or exclusive or eliminating others, but rather, um, I'd like to claim that he's my friend, or maybe I should say he befriended me because of his spiritual nature, not because of anything we may have in common, even in terms of ashram or cultures, cultural upbringing, etc. We're obviously from different universes in that way. But still, he is my friend. I beg to be his friend. And how do I do that? I almost feel like Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita when Krishna showed his opulences and Arjuna felt so humbled and hesitant that I've slept on the same bed with you, I've done with you, I've treated you in this way, but I didn't know that your, your greatness. I, I feel that way um, about Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, especially since the, his departure a few days ago, so many photographs and remembrances and um, other accounts have filled the internet with um, information about how he's able to relate to a simple Bangladeshi villager or the prime minister of the UK. He has such a broad, as Mukhi was saying, a broad basis for his, his being. He's an accomplished gentleman in all ways. So how could I be or claim to be his friend? Well, the only way that that can happen is by the true spiritual opulences which were possessed by Bhakti Chu Swami Maharaj. Just as Krishna can, is in the heart of all living beings and has a very intimate relationship with each and every one of the un unknowable countless jivas, his devotee has that ability as well. And so Bhakti Chu Maharaj had the ability to make you feel like a confidential associate of his, even if you are just a nobody, like myself. What do I have in common with him? He's a big leader with tens of thousands of disciples all over the world. I'm just a you know, poor householder. How can I ever dare to have a relationship with him? But because he possessed the spirit, and it's a spiritual quality, that's what I want to make clear. I perceive he has a spiritual ability to befriend all beings. It's like uh, our God says in Mulakrithi spoke about Prabhupada, a friend to all. That's Bhakti Chu Swami as well, a friend to all. Because of his spiritual potency, he was able to make each and every person. And as Tama Harpa was saying, you hear that as you go through the talks this evening. He was able to make each and every person feel like they were his confidential friend and associate. That's, that's a glory that is one among many that um, we saw in the character of Bhakti Chu Swami. I'll just take two minutes to mention one other aspect. Um, and that is, it's a similar, that is that his defense of and loyalty to Srila Prabhupada and Iskand. When we were in North America here going through some trouble with one of our major temples a few years ago, there came a time when somebody from the GBC had to go into the lion's den and make a declaration of the authority of the GBC had to go into a Sunday feast that was like a hostile takeover. And mild-mannered, gentlemanly Bhakti Chu Swami not only volunteered for the job, but went in and did a stellar 
very courageous act of declaring that this is Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON temple and it shall not be taken in any other way. And he sort of, by that act, changed the tide in the struggle that the GBC was having to bring this um, temple back into the fold of ISKCON. And so I'll always remember him for that as a comrade in arms as well, kind of like a friend, but more of a militaristic kind of a twist to it. But Bhakti Chu Maharaj was a wonderful person. If you ever wondered what people are like in the spiritual world, just study the character of Bhakti Chu Swami Maharaj and you'll understand a little bit about what the spiritual world is all about. So with that, I'll end and offer my pronouns to Srila Bhakti Chu Swami Maharaj. Thank you so very much. Um, and uh, thank you to Tamar Prabhu and thank you, Mother Mukia. Um, it's, it's, it's so great to, to hear from you and to, to have you here. Um, it, it's very heartening. Um, and I, I, I look forward to more as we, as we continue on tonight. Um, so uh, I, I just wanted to give a quick rundown as far as as far as where we're headed here tonight in terms of our, our speakers. Um, so so Ambarish Prabhu will be speaking next, followed by uh, Mother Swaha, uh, and then our next group of speakers will come after that, and that's uh, Satya, uh, Mother Satyasara, um, uh, Mother Sham Kishori, uh, Shamla Kishori, and then uh, Prabhu, uh, Das Prabhu, and, and Mother Coach Rupa uh, will follow them, and uh, and we'll continue on. Thank you. Hare Krishna, am I on? Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Namam Vishnu Padai, Gusvasai, Buddha, Shimati Bhakti, Vananda, Samani, Jamane, Namaste, Sharasati, Nirvase, Sarasati, Vati, Vasjitada. So I want to thank everybody who's spoken so far, and uh, every word that they say rang true with me. Uh, I, especially what Talmahar said and what Stacia just said, because uh, Bhakti Chiru was also very, very friendly at, to me. And I would wonder sometimes, you know, here was, you know, a Bengali Vaishnav gentleman uh, through and through. And, you know, I was some rough and tumble ex-hippie from Detroit. So, but he was always extremely kind to me and gentle and his, you know, I think Tomahar mentioned that his, his demeanor, his character was so steady. It was always, you know, in the modes of goodness, pure goodness. I heard a story today that when he took initiation, and I don't have a reference for this, but when he took a, initiation first, second, and then sannyas, there were some devotees that were, uh, you know, talking to Prabhupada, well, what if he falls down, you know, because it's like very quickly. And probably <laughs> Srila Prabhupada said, if he falls, he'll fall into the modes of goodness. <laughs> so, you know, that's the kind of character that he was, you know. And, uh, you know, I've known him for many years We've gotten closer recently because of the TOVP, but I met him for the first time uh, in San Francisco. I had moved out there when ISKCON was going through a lot of turmoil in the early 80s. And uh, he came out to visit Atrey Rishi, who was the, the head of the, of the uh, project out there. So we would drive in the car and Atrey and him would argue and Maharaj was always, always talking, as, as I think Tamahara and Seisha said, you know, so you have to stay within ISKCON. ISKCON is Prabhupada's body. Prabhupada is the founder of Acharya. You know, was loyal to a T to Srila Prabhupada and to ISKCON. And so I was immediately attracted to, to that because I've always been a company man. So, you know, I, he and I saw eye to eye on that on that uh, 
of course he was much more surrendered than I was, but but still it was it was very sweet to always be with him. And uh, you know, we got he came to our wedding in Australia, and uh, you know, it was you know very kind of him to come there and bless us. And, um, you know, we got whenever Swaha and I would come to Mayapur, we would meet with Maharaj and he would often ask us up to his uh, apartment for lunch and these wonderful prasadam feasts. I mean, I would always have to kind of leave on my knees because, you know, I'd eat so much. But he was always, always concerned with our comfort and you know, how are we doing in Krishna consciousness? Always so concerned and so sweet. You know, we, there's a, a movement now on about devotee care and everything. Well, he had it, you know, within him. He was born with it, you know, devotee care. No one had to teach him anything, you know. So, you know, it was such a pleasure to be with him and to have his association. And I was mm -hmm. fortunate. I was at that lunch that Tamahar was speaking about mm -hmm. also with uh, Prabir and uh, two days in a row. So we were very fortunate. But uh, I've gotten to know or I got to know Maharaj uh, very closely over the last few years because <clears throat> he was very supportive of the TLVP. And whenever we needed help, he was there to help us. As a matter of fact, this spring, he was uh, scheduled to come to the U.S. to travel with Brajavilas and myself around uh, to various temples to uh, reconfirm all the pledges that had been made. So he had volunteered to come to like practically every temple to do that. So and that was his nature. He just he saw that the TOBP was one of Prabhupada's uh, main desires and whatever he could do to help, he would even if it was at the sacrifice of his own project, which he did do recently, uh, you know, he sacrificed uh, a, a sum of money that was supposed to go to his project in Florida and send it to the TOVP. So that was just the way that he was. And, uh, you know, I will miss him terribly. Uh, he was one of my mentors, his sweet demeanor, and, you know, because, uh, you know, my wife is Bengali, you know, everything was like big family. So I will miss him terribly. But, you know, uh, you know, I know that that uh, he I, I can't say if he's with Krishna or not, but he's certainly with Prabhupada because Prabhupada was his life and his soul. And for that, I always uh, fall at his feet and. Um, you know, I, I I just will miss his association so much. So thank you very much. And I'll turn it over now to my wife, Swaha. Hare Krishna. Namo Vishnu Padaya. Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Pinamini. Namaste Sarasati Devi Guru Vani Pracharini Nirvishesh Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarini. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adyaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Vanchaka Kuturi Vashcha Kripa Sindhu Dev Chapatita Nam Ram Hare Vaishnavitya Nam His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share with you all because my husband has been uh, sharing over different forums and uh, it's uh, been very healing. The last few days we've been just totally immersed in uh, Bhakti Charu Swami Katha, you know, hearing from devotees all over the world and hearing his classes as well. And it's been like a soothing balm for our hearts. And before I say anything else, my heart goes out to all the disciples of Maharaj because if I feel so, such a feelings of loss, I can only imagine how you all are feeling. And uh, I don't know if you watched the program that my husband was on from Mayapur and we are trying to do something <laughs> to help you 
channel your grief by helping build Maharaj's Samadhi in Mayapur. And so hopefully, you know, we can do something to help and serve Maharaj for all his love and kindness he's shown us for so many years. The day that we got this news this, that morning, uh, even though he had been sick, we were all hoping he was going to recover because everyone was praying for him. Um, and um, but when when we find you know that morning when my husband told me, I was like in total disbelief and shock. And um, my husband really helped me. He said. Uh, I'm writing my offering to Maharaj. Why don't you sit and write your offering? And that was really helped me, you know, process my grief. So I'll just read my offering that I wrote to Maharaj because there's so much to say because, you know, going to Mayapur for me is never going to be the same again because going to Mayapur meant, you know, going to Maharaj's apartment and just seeing him smiling, running down the stairs. It's so informal in Mayapur, you know, you just stop and talk. It's just like, you know, so nice. So uh, we will miss him so much. So uh, this is the offering I wrote to Maharaj. Our dearest, most beloved and respected Srila Bhakti. Okay. My heart weeps and tears flood my eyes as I write this humble offering. I feel like you were wounded in battle as one of the bravest generals in our Senapati Acharya, Srila Prabhupada's army, who chose to fight on the front lines despite all the risks. And like Bhishma Dev lying on a bed of arrows, you endured the hospital stay until it was the most glorious day of Guru Purnima and Srila Sanatan Goswami Maharaj's disappearance day that Guru and Krishna called you back to the spiritual world within their loving embrace. We don't know how we will carry on the mission of Srila Prabhupada without your love and personal guidance. It's a deep personal loss for us at our TOBP family and especially for me. You were always so very kind and loving to me. Your presence at our wedding was specially appreciated by my parents who felt an immediate bond with you because of being Bengali. I remember sitting down to take prasad at Srila Prabhupada's centennial celebration and you were seated beside my good husband. And in an amazing gesture of humility, you took a piece of prasad from his plate and then he took from yours and I took from his and it was such a spontaneously loving and fun prasad honoring party. When my whole family visited Mayapur a few years back, you invited us for all for prasad and fed us lovingly. Your loving disciples trained in perfect Vaishnava etiquette were offering water at the table to wash our hands, but I declined the offer and I told my daughters and son-in-law to go to the washroom, which they did. But you personally showed me to your bathroom to wash my hands. In all humility, I accepted, but I couldn't believe how attentive you were to everyone. You are like a family member to me, Maharaj, and it's so painful to bear your loss. When you came to take prasad at my home the last time, you personally cooked a prep to show me one quick and easy prep. I will forever cherish that memory. When I went to the temple that evening, my friends told me how you had said that I had served you wonderful Bengali prasad. Tears of appreciation welled up in my eyes because I had felt that my cooking was not quite up to the mark that day. And certainly not up to the standard how you feed us in Mayapur. You have always been the most stalwart supporter of the TOVP and organized a fundraising event in Kolkata where you enthusiastically led the whole ceremony of the Abhishek of Lord Nityananda's Padukas 
despite suffering from the pain of shingles, you are a true leader because you have followed Srila Prabhupada's example, followed faithfully in his lotus footsteps and understood his cherished desire to see the TOVP built. We feel lost without you. You have guided and encouraged me in my feeble effect, efforts at Bengali preaching by personally taking the trouble to record an episode in your apartment. I could go on and on, but I will end with the most loving note you sent my husband on his birthday and the gift you wanted to give him. So when you came to our house, you said you needed my help in offering a gift to my husband. And I agreed, of course. But when I heard what it was, I said, Maharaj, you have so much service. Why do you want to take on this headache? And your words are etched in my memory because they were so memorable. You said, it's a joy for my heart to offer this gift. Unfortunately, uh, dear Damodar Prasad, your disciple knows that I have not been able to help yet, but I will better late than never. And I'm sorry, Maharaj, I have taken so long unnecessarily, but now broken hearted as I am, I will try to do it. Remembering Gopakumar's return to our beloved Lord Krishna, I'm sure everyone, especially Krishna and Srila Prabhupada are happy to have you back. And that is our only solace as we carry on without your loving presence with deep gratitude and prayers at your lotus feet i beg to remain your humble servant swaha dasi thank you so much all glory is true bhakti charu swar maharaj ki jai shila prabhupad ki jai thank you again so much thank you hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna uh, ambrish prabhu and, and mother swaha that, that was that was beautiful thank, thank you so much for for joining us and being part of this um it really means so much to us. Thank you. Um, so, so next we have our next group of speakers that, that are due to come on. Um, uh, we're not sure if Mother uh, uh, Satyasara is here. Um, we're, we're not seeing you in the list. Uh, so if it's okay with uh, Shamala Kishori, we can, we can go ahead and continue with you, uh, followed by uh, Badahari Prabhu and uh, Mother Kosh Rupa. Hare Krishna, everyone. Um, please accept my humble obeisances. I'm, I feel very honored and grateful to be part of this Sangha. Um, it's, it's actually been uh, one of the most devastating times um, of my life. Um, it's, uh, it's been very difficult. I, I always, uh, as a kid, as a child, I always anticipated this day happening. And when it, even though I anticipated it so much, um, when it actually did, I was overwhelmed with how painful and uh, how shocking it was, um, despite knowing that this is inevitable. And uh, I, I've been thinking so much about Naratam and Srinivasacharya and how, how much separation they felt from all the acharyas that were older than them were slowly passing away. And, those of us in the younger generation are just uh, going to experience that one or the other, all these wonderful devotees that mean so much to us. Um, personally, uh, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj was, as Seisha Prabhu was saying, um, he made everybody feel like he was uh, part of their family. And he did that with my family. Um, he was also my Shiksha, he is my Shiksha guru. Um, I first met him when I was about three or four years old, I was looking, we were living in Rotterdam in Belgium. Um, my family, my sister was two years older than me. Uh, we were, the first memory I have is looking uh, at him arriving. Uh, you know how the, the Rotterdam castle is there and then next to it on the, on the side is the apartments and we lived in one of those. And so we were looking outside the window down, we were on the second floor looking down and Maharaj was walking and we were so excited, even though we were so young, we were so excited to see him. And uh, I remember, even though I was a child, it's, it's memory stays in my mind that he looked up and, and waved at us in the window. <laughs> 
And many years later, he actually, when we were traveling with him in Europe, he, he actually mentioned that memory that he had of us um, as little children, which, which really struck me because even though we were kids, he, he held on to that memory um, as, as a special moment interaction. Um, he was so personal like that. Uh, one, one little anecdote from his time in Rotterdam. He stayed there for about a month. I was, of course, very young, so I don't remember everything. My father um, and mother shared this story with me that he, um, there was like a thicket of nettles near the temple. And um, Maharaj, he's such an expert cook, so he asked the devotees to collect nettles and um, he prepared a preparation, like a subji, out of the, the nettle, I guess the leaves or some part of the plant. Um, and my father was sharing this in a recent, uh, one of the memorials, and he said that the, the prashad was so delicious, even though I had come from this plant, which is, if you just, if you simply touch it, it pricks you and it burns, and it's like such a uh, unpleasant plant to come in contact with. And yet Maharaj's touch, he transformed the plant into this beautiful dish. And, and so my father was saying how this is, um, this is a metaphor for Maharaj as a person, how he would, no matter who he interacted with, would transform that into a beautiful um, encounter and transform our hearts uh, like that nettle plant. Um, so that was a, a little pastime I wanted to share from that time. Um, Later on, when I was living, I grew up in Nugaloka community in North Carolina, and it's a, it's a very small community, but somehow, um, despite the smallness of it, I got this incredible fortune uh, that Maharaj came there to have his base in America for um, several years. He had his base in Durham, North Carolina. So over many years, he would come there very frequently and um, give us his association. And at that time, of course, being a teenager, I think it was uh, his impact on my life at that time was, uh, I don't even know where I would be now if it wasn't for him, because as a teenager, it's very um, a time where you're very impressionable. And Maharaj's influence on my spiritual life uh, was so important to me in those years. He became, um, yeah, he just became so dear to me and my, my family and, and my sister. Um, we we asked Maharaj, is there any way we can get more of your association? And he invited my sister and I to come with him to Europe over two summers. So we, we actually uh, traveled with him uh, through many different countries in Europe. And uh, had, anyway, I have many memories of that, but to keep it uh, short, uh, just a few things that come to mind. Uh, he would ask my sister and I, to, uh, he would request us to play Murdunga for him actually in different programs. And I was always very touched by that because there was many you know, men who could play, but he would call us over and can you play Murdunga? And he would ask us and we were young and it really meant so much to us. It really encouraged us in our spiritual lives. Um, he, was, he was like a father to us. He took us under his wing. And also I was, I was reflecting on how he was like a grandmother because he, he would ask us about our our meals about um are you how's your accommodation all the the things that a grandmother would do very warm and, and friendly and he would he showed us how to cut a mango like he said that uh, proper way to cut it is little squares and so then you can kind of pop it out and eat the squares without getting the fibers in your teeth um and um one so another thing I want to share is that as as I got as these times were happening, I was a, a late teenager, early twenties. I was very inspired by him, and also simultaneously very inspired by Indradhuna Maharaj. I had an equal, completely equal amount of love and appreciation for both of them. They both um, had transformed my spiritual life so much. So I was feeling very, very conflicted, and this. This was over the course of several years. I was actually very torn. I was feeling a lot of pain having to choose one of them for um, Diksha initiation. So I, um, I spoke to Maharaj about this. I spoke to both of them and they, they both shared a similar response. Um, and they were both, and they're so loving with each other. So it made me feel very, um, very much like a family. So I, I, I told Maharaj my, my confusion and my kind of my difficulty choosing 
And he, and he responded, and I'll just read you, I, I was looking at this up in my journal, he said the following words. Um, he said, it's a matter of the heart. All these formalities are not so important. We are all one family. My relationship with you will not change no matter who you choose. And he said, it's a, it's a matter of, of the relationship and of gratitude towards that person. So, um, so that, that soothed the, um, the pain that I was feeling that I was afraid that if I chose one that I would lose my relationship with the other one or somehow it would become lesser. And um, I always felt like Maharaj very, very much created that mood of family under Srila Prabhupada. So uh, in one sense, we're all connected. Um, and and uh, he, he demonstrated that again and again by having these um, yearly retreats and, and he would dedicate like the evenings or one day where we would, he would have us speak about Prabhupada, like all the devotees. And even if you were nervous, you had to speak, you had like 10 minutes to, to speak about Prabhupada or something. So he would, he would encourage us and, and kind of um, train us how to appreciate Prabhupada and put him at the center of our lives. And he even made his Vyasa Pujas, um, he called them uh, Srila Prabhupada Memorial Festivals. So uh, he, he really created that mood of unity underneath Srila Prabhupada, which I'm eternally grateful for. Um, I, I just want to end by, by saying that um, as painful as this time has been for me um, and for so many of us, um, I'm finding so much solace in these discussions and sharing of pastimes. It uh, keeps the heart going. It's like so intense that sometimes the pain is, it's uh, like my father described, can be like a tsunami wave. It just knocks you down and you don't know how you're gonna ever be able to go on. Um, so so thank you all so much. Hare Krishna. Shama Kishori, thank, thank you so much for, for sharing uh, with us. Uh, your, your mention of Radhadesh brings up so many memories for me. Um, I, I get to speak a little bit later, so I'll, I'll, I'll save for that. But, uh, but thank you so much for sharing. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to have you here. We really appreciate you taking the time. Um, so we're, we're still trying to um, get a hold of uh, Mother Satisara. If she does get on the call, we'll, we'll, we'll bring her in. Uh, and, uh, but we're going to go ahead and continue to move on. So we're going to ask uh, uh, Badarhai Prabhu, followed by Mother Kush Rupa, uh, to speak. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Actually, Kush Rupa is going to start. <laughs> I'm going to break etiquette and follow my husband's <laughs> request that I speak first. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. It's such <clears throat> a um, joyful and sorrowful time to be with all of you here. Um, likewise, we've been uh, hearing and chanting and listening to Bhakti Chu Swami sing his bhajans and singing kirtans with memorials all over the world the last few days. And before that, all the, the kirtans that we were all engaged in to pray for, uh, begging Krishna for Maharaj to stay with us just a little bit longer. And um, I was remembering the first time I met Bhakti uh, Chumaraj was when I was in Vrindavan. I was quite young and uh, I think it was 83 and I was in the, I was with one of his servants, um, somebody who was helping cook Kushanam for him and we were in the Krishna Balaram guest house kitchen in between lunch and dinner and, and Maharaj came in. He came in and he had a conversation with both of us and spent a good half an hour with us and he was showing her, her some things with cooking and kind of took over and and it was <laughs> I was thinking I've never met a Swami like this before and I was so um, deeply affected by his demeanor and his very apparent kindness and inclusiveness and everything about him so I was, you know, completely attracted to him and wanting to get his association whenever, however, and whatever service, humble service I could render. And a few years later, uh, Badahari and I, 
returned from Vrindavan and to Laguna Beach Temple, and it was a very chaotic time in our movement, and many, many of the uh, spiritual masters had left, or initiating uh, gurus had left, and we were asked to take over managing Prabhupada's temple in Laguna. And, you know, we, we had our service, we were fully engaged, but there was like a tsunami of new devotees that came. There were so many new devotees that came. There were so many serious congregational members that were coming. And, and we were in such a quandary that, you know, uh, those of you, you know, when you raise someone, you uh, preach to someone, you raise them in Krishna consciousness, you care for them, like, you know, they're part of your spiritual family. You're very, very protective to uh, of their spiritual life. And we'd seen so many, so many devotees, uh, young disciples be devastated. And we were just um, by the previous goings on in the society. So, you know, I felt like a mama bear. It was like I wasn't going to let anybody near our new <laughs> devotees that I didn't completely know and trust and could wholeheartedly recommend and knew their past and knew their character and all of that. And so uh, Vadahari and I had discussed it at length and we were like, okay, the only one we know and trust enough is Bhakti True Swami. So we invited Maharaj to come and to our great delight, not only did he come and not with any agenda, just please come and help us. We have so many young devotees, please come and and help us train them and preach to them. And, and some may, you know, want to take shelter of you. So from that time on, he came and he came at least every year, sometimes more than once a year. And he spent time and, and it wasn't an official visit. I mean, when he came, he was part of the family. Mm -hmm. He was in the, like we were running a restaurant and our Sunday feast at that time got about 500, 400, about 400 guests. And, we were only like 15 devotees. So it was, um, you know, we just tired. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was just exhausted. <laughs> and on, on Sundays, uh, back to true marriage would say, you've all been working so hard. I'm going to cook lunch for everyone. And you go in the kitchen and cook lunch for the devotees. And, you know, we'd say, no, 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 Marisha. And he'd say, and he'd insist and we're like, okay, go for it. <laughs> we're like, please, by all means. Uh, just to be able to have the benefit of uh, actually honoring his prashadam. And so, yeah, that, that was what was, you know, really just flooding through my mind is those times, uh, all of those very special times in Laguna. And of course, we'll get to hear later Vishambar's Prabhu's and Rinda Devi's, uh, Rindavaneshri's stories of um, how they took shelter of Bhakti Trumaraj and how um, yeah, I, actually, I will share when our when our children were really young. Both of my kids, I mean, I'm talking one, two, three years old. They would sit through hours of Bhakti Srimaraj's classes without making noises, without crying, without anything. They were just they loved his kirtan, and they were just and nobody, none of the other mothers could believe it. It's like why are they so quiet? You get to sit in here the whole the whole class. And in addition to the temple devotees, our congregational members, many of them also took shelter and took initiation from Bhakti Jirmaj. So he continued, even after we left Laguna, Maharaj continued coming, I think, um, almost every year to spend mm -hmm. time with the devotees there. So um, just very, very grateful for um, all of the shelter he gave to all of us. And mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, as as Koshi said, when we, I, I remembered uh, taking over as temple president, or I, I don't know if it was, I, guess, I don't know if you could call it taking over, being taken over by temple presidency. And um, it was a very, it was a difficult time. Everything had switched, you know, previously there was some kind of, if you were a, a temple official, there was some kind of authority and you know, but uh, but when we, you know, took up the responsibility, it was, you know, pretty much people had lost, the devotees had lost a lot of faith. And it was very, yeah, it was a very uncertain time. 
So to have Mars's association at that time was just invaluable to really see here was a person with no personal agenda. It was really clear. It was like, like Kosha said, he just came and he was part of the family. He wasn't ordering, you know, such a senior person with so much association with Srila Prabhupada that he wasn't ordering anybody around or he was, he was just there with us. And his, his personal character was just so exemplary. He was so clean and just such a, a thorough gentleman and so friendly, so lighthearted, actually. He was always very, very lighthearted and he just made you feel like everything was okay. You know, when you're with him, everything is, everything is fine. Um, yeah, I just, I think somebody, well, mentioned these things before, but if you, you know, if you think of what would a Vaishnava be like, what would a resident of the spiritual world be like, you, you just have to think of him as being an example of those, uh, those characteristics. And he did accept many uh, of the devotees as disciples. And we also noted that it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a formality. He really looked after them. He took Vishwambara traveling, which was so cool. And, and there were other devotees that had trouble in, in you know, different times. And he was involved, he was concerned. Uh, he would you know, reach out to them and bring them to him sometimes. And so it was really, uh, really wonderful to see and his own in, in his own just personal sadhana that was also exemplary how he behaved as a as a devotee. I remember he would observe Kadashi probably all his life, but he would fast the whole day from I think uh, liquid also every Kadashi wouldn't take anything. And then early the next morning at just the right time he would take a mixture, I believe it was like buttermilk with mixed with water and, you know, he would drink that and break his fast and just, you know, these are little things, but everything about his, uh, his personal character and just the way he lived his life and did everything was, was just so Krishna conscious and so you know, beyond Brahminical. I really appreciated what he said. If he does fall down, it'll be the mode of goodness. <laughs> that's, that's fucking true, Maharaj. He was, he was, yeah, it was like pure goodness. It was beyond, beyond goodness, just in everything. And yeah, he was a fantastic, fantastic cook. And uh, I remember once being in Mayapur, and I, I believe it was during one of his, uh, Vyasa, his Vyasa Pujas, and he would invite all of his god brothers to take prasadam mm -hmm. with him. And I, to date, I haven't had a feast like that in my life. There was, there was just, you know, they, every, every prep would be like just a little tiny bit, you know, but they just kept coming and coming and coming. I have no idea how many preparations there were. First, there was all the amazing, you know, Bengali preparations, and then there was Chinese preparations and Italian. It was, it was, it was astounding. I've never seen such a feast. And I, I, I don't even remember what it was for, but I remember one time I went, I, I came to his room in Mayapur to see him about something, and I don't remember what it was for, but it was, I kind of came unannounced and he was obviously very uh, tired, you know, he was done with the day, but, but somehow or other he stopped and he was very, oh, one of my god brothers is here, please, you know, take care of him. And, you know, it was, I was feeling like, oh, I shouldn't have come now, he's very tired, but, but he, you know, he just, you know, didn't make any qualms about that. He immediately uh, took on that, that position. So, yeah, so many memories. I remember, I think the last time I met him was in South Africa at a Rathiatra. And we didn't get to talk, but he just immediately came up and gave me a big hug. <laughs> so that was, that was Bhakti Chur Mahasis. And I feel, yeah, I feel, 
I don't know, I guess I feel like I just didn't appreciate him enough. I think that's maybe what happens when, when we lose somebody that, and, and I really appreciate all of your devotees sharing. Thank you so much, because it helps me deepen, uh, deepen my appreciation. You see him as a wonderful gentleman, it's amazing, but, but actually, you know, he's an empowered Vaishnava, you know, just really beyond my, mad, my, beyond my ability to understand who he is, who is his person, it's really beyond my ability to, to understand, but hearing from you and hearing your experiences helps out. I just you know, wish I could have been more appreciative when I knew him, but anyway, I guess that's all. Thank you so much. His Holiness Bhakti Chur Maharaj Ki Jai. Gora Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. Hi Krishna. Parahari Prabhu and Mother Kotra, but thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate it. And uh, and again, just uh, as we're hearing about Radha Desh, I really going to be each, a, lot of, a lot of memories. So um, I will hopefully get an opportunity to share some of those a little bit later on. Um, uh, so, so actually, uh, Mother Setyasara has has joined us. Uh, and as I say, Prabhu, I know I had mentioned maybe you go next. If it's okay with you, we'll we'll invite Mother Setyasara to to go to speak. She said she just has a, a short um, a short thing she wants to say. And then Ananda Sage Prabhu, you you will you will be um, right up after her, followed by Mother Nartaka Gopal, uh, and uh, and Mother Sri Gurangi, and then Brajaraja Sutta Prabhu. If it's okay with you, we'll, we'll invite Mother Sajasara to, to go to speak. She said she just has a, a short, um, yes, a short thing she wants sure. to say. And then and the Sage Prabhu, you, you, will, you will be um, right up after. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Um, first of all, I'd like to say. Hare Krishna. I, I'd like to say that what I have to say is very brief. Um, oh, Hare Krishna. All, Can you hear all, me? All obeisances. To, I offer my obeisance to all the devotees who are listening, and to all the devotees who will. Hi, Krishna. Can you hear me? Um, first of all, I'd like to say, Hi, Krishna. Okay, um, it appears that there's something playing back that uh, the, the video back again. So I'm just gonna unmute uh, Vishwambar Prabhu and uh, we're gonna see if we can resolve that with uh, Mother Satyasar in a little bit. Okay, yeah, thank you. Sorry sorry for the technical issues there. Mother Satyasar, we'll get you sorted out. Um, uh, Damodar will get on that with you and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get you back on track. Uh, in the meantime, though, we will ask uh, Ananda Sage Prabhu to, to please uh, join us, and uh, we'll, we'll continue. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Namo 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 only a short show and tell for, um, about the memories from Maharaj. And my only interaction with Maharaj was a couple of years ago. And I have a ton of gratitude to Prabir Prabhu for arranging that. This was one of the times when Maharaj, two years ago, um, this is when Jayapataka Maharaj was recovering in Chennai. Maharaj came here for a Bhagavatam class. And uh, I was fortunately 
off that day, so I was able to listen to the class. And then Prabir Prabhu, after the class, he calls me and asks me if I could arrange a flu shot for him. And I immediately just took up that opportunity, dressed up, and went to my work and asked them to follow me. I think uh, Shesha Prabhu was also with Maharaj and Prabhu Prabhu. So they followed me immediately. He was uh, on a tight schedule, so they came right behind me. And I went in to the pharmacy and, go, dark and uh, made the arrangements. And while he was, while I was making the arrangement, I noticed Maharaj was having a conversation with my partner, who is from a different faith, a Muslim from uh, Egypt. And he was having a, a long conversation with him. And uh, I was able to do this uh, small service for Maharaj so that he could go with Jai Pataka Maharaj, who was recovering from his transplant. So I just want to show this as a show and tell. That was my only interaction with Maharaj. And I noticed he was uh, so gentle and humble all the time during this very brief interaction. And uh, he, wa he was, uh, it was, that was the only time I had um, an opportunity to interact with him. And right after that, he had to leave because of a tight schedule. And fortunately, he was able to go visit Jai Pataka Maharaj in Chennai after that. And that's all I have to share about Maharaj. But of late, um, uh, Maharaj has been giving a lot of classes from Ujjain and my wife uh, at night uh, here, she, uh, she puts up the Bhagavatam class. And of late, we have been listening to a lot of Bhagavatam class lectures from Maharaj. And the theme I always got from Maharaj's lectures were that he was always concerned about the welfare of uh, devotees in, in the community. And instead of making more and more new devotees, he wanted to make sure that the devotees already in the community are well taken care of, well managed. And that was a continuous theme I got from Maharaj all the time, listening to his classes. And he was very focused on that to make sure everybody in the community are taken care of and uh, he was really concerned about their welfare. And that's something. And today morning, uh, Badar Prabhu sent me a short video clip about um, Maharaj giving a small talk about why he will never leave his con. And after seeing that video clip, I realized that was the best preaching video that we, we can use. Uh, and so I sent it to a lot of my non-devotee friends, because that he just gave a good overview and essence of uh, the spiritual life with it in Scone. And uh, I thank Badar Prabhu and Prabir Prabhu for this opportunity that I got. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Could, could I say one, one thing? <laughs> uh, it was one of the home programs and uh, Bhakti Charu Maharaj, Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj was there. What impressed me the most was when he was leaving, he went to every single person and said bye. He just did not say bye to one person or collectively and leave. He was making sure he went to every single person. He had that personal touch with everyone all the time. It was so nice and very sad that we cannot have any more of his association in person. And Bhakti Charu Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai. Thank you. Thank you for Thank allowing, you. Give, giving us this opportunity. So. And uh, Mother Narataka Gopal, you're up next. All right, Krishna. So we're just uh, uh, we're still working with Mother Satyasara. We're gonna we're hoping to get to get things sorted out for her. So we're gonna advance the schedule here a little bit, um, as Dominic just said, and we're gonna ask Mother Nartaka Gopal uh, to speak next, uh, and then uh, she, she would be followed by uh, Mother Sri Gurungi and Brajraj Sutta Prabhu. And if we get things sorted out in between, uh, we'll bring Mother uh, Satyasara to to hear from her.
and uh, Mother Nartaka Gopal, if you're there, uh, unfortunately, I uh, I can't. We can't hear you right now. Okay. Okay, so we've hit, we've hit the technical difficulty stage of, of the memorial today, but we'll, we'll continue on. Uh, uh, I think Dominar's on the case, so we'll get the, we'll get things sorted out here. So um, we will have uh, we'll ask uh, Sri Gurungi and uh, Prabir Prabhu to to speak next if you guys are ready, followed by uh, Brad Raja Sutta Prabhu. Hey, um, so uh, the very first time I remember meeting His Holiness Bhakti Charaswami, I was just coming to the Philadelphia Temple. Um, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to be involved with this son or not. And um, he was giving an initiation ceremony and um, it was so sweet because um, he personally sang the Brahma Samhita prayers. And I thought after that ceremony, I wanna be a part of this. <laughs> I wanna be a part of this world. And um, so I would come every Sunday to the temple and whenever Maharaj would come, he would always used to sing the uh, Tavakatamritam prayers. And they were just so beautiful. And um, you know, before I could even memorize any Bhagavad Gita or any, any other slokas, I always knew the first stanza of that prayer because he would always sing it. And it was just so, so beautiful. And I could just, he just gave a glimpse of how beautiful the spiritual world is. Um, one thing that strikes for me, uh, two points that strike for me actually from, from my ideas is his sweetness, his relationships with devotees and his sincere dedication to Shiva Prabhupada. My Guru Maharaj said every single time he would come to New Vrindavan, uh, my Guru Maharaj, His Holiness Varshana Swami would always say um, that Bhakti Chara Swami would always ask him, how is your health? How are you doing? Who's taking care of you? Are, you, are all your needs being met? Very, very personal. And he would also um, ask about the status of the palace, Srila Prabhupada Samadhi in America. And, you know, is it renovated? Is it complete? Should we raise funds for it? This should be responsibility of all the God brothers and God sisters, not just New Vrindavan management. Let's, let's, you know, make this happen. He was very, very uh, keen on that being uh, completely renovated um, to, to, to close sooner than later. And that really, these two things really touched my Guru Maharaj's heart. Every time he would come, he would ask about these. And we had the opportunity, uh, the very good fortune for Maharaj, for Bhakti Chara Swami to visit us this past few years. And the last year when he came during Karthik, um, I was one week before de delivering our little Nitai and Maharaj was so sweet. He was always, are you sure? Am I not uh, intruding? Am I, you know, this must be too much for your wife. He was just always concerned about us. And we just wanted him to come. It was hard to We're like, please, Maharaj, just come. Give us your blessings. Give your, your we want your association. And uh, I remember one time my husband was actually um, massaging Maharaj's feet. And um, I was in my bedroom with my um, one Nimai and suddenly Nimai woke up and was crying and was a little disoriented and calling for his dad and Maharaj just made my husband stop and said no this is your first duty your son um you know he and I I wanted my husband to continue the service and Maharaj was was, was like please you know the, the children come first and anytime when we were here and my little one was acting up um, Maharaj would kept always say, please, he's a little boy. It's okay. It's okay. The children are first. Don't, don't reprimand them. Don't ask him to, to do this or that. Just let them be. He was so personal, even with the children. And, um, just, I'm just grateful for all of this. 
um, the blessings, Myers, that you gave and praying that we can continue to re receive your blessings continually. Thank you. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Bhakti Charu Guru Maharaj, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, and all glories to all his disciples, grand disciples. So I had the uh, great fortune to have association with Maharaj. Actually, all of you uh, are more fortunate than me because you had a, a longer years, but I had last two years. First, um, I, I knew Maharaj before in New York, but uh, came contact closely in Sheshu Prabhu's house. And actually, uh, Sheshu Prabhu's house, Sheshu Prabhu first introduced me as a doctor. Maharaj was a little sick. And I, I, I'm just giving you one example how Maharaj was so nice to how we behave. Uh, so I mentioned one that Maharaj, I'm taking shelter of Sheshu Prabhu. And then Maharaj said, oh, you should take initiation from Sheshu Prabhu. Uh, then uh, uh, it didn't, uh, uh, we didn't talk anything about that, but then he asked me next day to Bishwamba Prabhu's house to see him. So I went there early morning and then Maharaj said again that, oh, you should take a, 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 a take initiation. Uh, and I told Maharaj that Maharaj, uh, uh, I was from another Sampradaya. I got my Harinam uh, initiation. Oh, he said, oh, that's okay. You take second initiation. Then uh, uh, then I said, Maharaj, uh, I'm not sure Shashu Prabhu will give, uh, but uh, shelter means um, uh, I mean, I'm taking uh, association of his uh, uh, Shashu Prabhu. Uh, then Maharaj said, oh, that means you have to understand. When you say shelter, it means that you are taking initiation. Uh, so I said, I, I apologize. So I understand that Maharaj, how, uh, uh, I mean, he was so uh, meticulous on what we say and then we do. And so uh, I just want to mention a few occasions uh, uh, Maharaj, how he was, uh, he, like as my wife was mentioning, last year he came twice and Govardhan Puja day, uh, uh, he was here and the day before he just came from Brinda, uh, India. And he called me that, okay, we are coming. Uh, so you need to invite uh, some of my God brothers. And so, uh, and then he then right away, he said, oh, your wife, uh, you are ex your wife is expecting. I said, yes, Maharaj. Then he said, oh, how are you going to cook? Then he said, okay, let me uh, ask my one of my cook to come. Then I said, Maharaj, what should we buy? Then he said, okay, let me make the menu. So he made the menus and everything. Uh, and he said, bring those, those things. And uh, uh, um, I will bring my cook and then he can cook. Then, then we had fortune to have uh, devotees like Tamar Prabhu, uh, um, Ambarish Prabhu and Shashu Prabhu and... Uh, Ranjit Prabhu, uh, they came. Uh, actually, he was also asking for uh, Guru Gauranga Prabhu, but who was not here. So, uh, El Maharaj was very, very, he knew everything. And then after, I mean, uh, then the one important uh, thing was um, uh, before last, last year, uh, 2018 also, Maharaj came and I asked, at uh, that time I asked him, uh, that Maharaj, uh, then he said, oh, you should take, uh, you can take second initiation, I will tell. But I said, Maharaj, I'm not, I'm my Harinam Diksha was from another Shampradai. Then he said, no, no, that's okay. You take second initiation, I will tell Mother Mukha and uh, Tomohar uh, You You tell them. So I said, Maharaj, uh, uh, but I, I need to do my Bhakti Shastri. Then he said, okay, then do the Bhakti Shastri and, uh, and then, uh, let me know. So, so it was really blessed. I was blessed. Like every time he come and if we have any uh, health related problem, he will call me. And just to give you one example, this time, uh, or the other important thing is I, uh, as my wife was mentioning, I was doing uh, services. Uh, I was messaging his feet when he came for Prabhupada Disappearance Day. And that also, uh, he left on the uh, same day of Govardhan Puja. And he told me that, okay, I'm going to let you know that whether I'm coming for Prabhupada's uh, disappearance day. So next day morning, he called me and he said, Prabhupada, I'm coming 
uh, there will be four devotees with me and I'm going to bring my cook. You don't have to do anything. You don't need to do any shopping. Uh, we are going to uh, make pizza. See, again, he, he managed the everything and he came. So that time we couldn't uh, offer our house for his disciples, other disciples. So we arranged for uh, uh, Govinda Prabhu's son's house. So I was alone with Maharaj. So I gave him message and so I asked him, Maharaj, do you have any any other services for me? So he said, oh, you are doing so many services already. He, uh, I don't have anything, but I said, then any instruction. Then he said, one instruction I will give you, never leave ISKCON. Uh, try to stay in ISKCON in any uh, situations. Never leave ISKCON. Uh, so I said, okay, Maharaj, bless me so that I can say, he said, okay, I, I'm blessing you. So that, that was one. Uh, then when this time this year, he during Gaur Pundima, he was supposed to come to Alachua. So I texted him. Usually I used to text him and he will respond to me uh, later. So I texted him, then Maharaj, uh, please, I heard you are going to be here in Alachua during Gaur Pundima. Please come to us, stay with us. So he didn't, uh, because suddenly he decided to go to Dubai and India because of the all this lockdown. So then suddenly in March, I got a, end of March, I got a call from him. He said, Prabir, I, uh, I couldn't uh, talk to you and I left early, uh, but next time when I come, I will definitely visit you. So, I mean, uh, I mean he, he was like a celebrity, I mean, and he's gone. And I am like a, such an insignificant, not even like his initiated disciple. But he was uh, very kind, very kind. One other important, uh, all of you are talking about like Vaishnav etiquette. One thing I realized when I was alone with him, he will, he will speak with me in Bengali. <laughs> Never speak. If, if I try to speak English, then he will uh, converse with me in Bengali. But if someone else is there, even my wife is there, he will start talking in English. <laughs> because... <laughs> So I learned those things that, then I asked Maharaj one time, he said Prabhupada used to do that also. He said, when I was with Prabhupada alone, then Prabhupada will speak Bengali with me. But in presence of other devotees, uh, he will speak English. So I just want to finish with uh, two uh, uh, situations. So this time when Maharaj got sick, he came on uh, D-Land on Monday, I think 16th. Uh, and then he called me on Tuesday morning that I, I'm sick. Then I told him, Maharaj, you, most likely you have COVID uh, because you have fever. Then he said, no, 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 I don't have COVID. Can you come? So I said, Maharaj, I'm, I'm going to try. So Tuesday, I couldn't go. Wednesday, I went there. And I, before that, I went, I, I gave him some medication. So uh, so he, he, he took the medication the first two days. Then he was feeling better than... When I went to see him, then he was asking me actually, Nimai and Nitai, he was telling me, how is your son doing? So he was telling me that give my, uh, in Bengali, nobody was there. He was telling me, give my Shubhacha. Shubhacha means regards. So I said, Maharaj, please bless them. We don't need your, they don't need your, we don't need your Shubhacha. He was blessing. So oh, he said, okay, I am blessing your sons and your wife and you. So, and then when I, I was telling him, Maharaj, please take care of yourself. Please eat as much as possible. Then he was telling me, oh, don't, don't worry. Uh, then he was saying that Maro bi rakho bi He said, uh, uh, do you remember this line? Uh, I said, yes, Maharaj. So he said, we, we just need, need to remember that line. And the last one was the day he went to the hospital. Uh, the last word when uh, Guru Guranga Prabhu was, uh, Maharaj disciple Guru Guranga Prabhu called me and he said, uh, Dr. Banik, uh, 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 Maharaj made me power of attorney, but I, they are asking for him to go to the ventilator and I cannot take the decision. So uh, then I said, okay, Prabhu, uh, he, he connected me through a line and Maharaj's uh, voice was very low. I can see that he was having short of breath. So Maharaj was saying that uh, I gave my life to the hand of devotees and Krishna. So do whatever you want. Uh, then I said, Maharaj, we'll call GBC. Uh, then Maharaj said, do whatever you want. So, so he, was, he was, even when he was going to the hospital, he was totally, fully dependent on Krishna.
he was happy and and i mean he he was transcendental so that's my good fortune uh, i got that accident hari krishna guru back to Uh, Prabir Prabhu and uh, Manisha Garangi, uh, thank, thank you so much. And uh, Prabir Prabhu, thank you especially for sharing um, uh, your, your last uh, couple um, comments there. Um, I, I think those are important for us to hear. Um, uh, so I think we've resolved the technical difficulties. So we're going to invite Mother Satyasara to join us, followed by Mother Nartaka Gopal. Uh, and then uh, Brad Rajasuta Prabhu. Uh, so um, if all goes well, that'll be uh, how it'll flow here. So um, Mother Sitesara, we'll, we'll give it back to you. Hare Krishna. Okay. Um, my, my story is very short. Um, we, we used to, my husband and I and our family, we lived in um, England back in, and we were there in the mid 80s and early 90s. And we lived in Leicester and Bhakti Chiru Maharaj used to come occasionally to Leicester, uh, to the temple there, and um, to the Namahata meetings. We used to do a lot of Namahata meetings. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's kind of how we knew him. And then in 1988, we were in Mayapur, um, my husband and I, and um, we... But they put us in the long building and um, there were cockroaches there. And at that time, I was totally freaked out by cockroaches. So the next morning, we were walking over to the temple and we just bumped right into Bhakti Churu Maharaj. And he remembered us from Leicester and we started talking. And I can't remember much of the conversation, but... Um, I, I just blurted out, oh, Maharaj, you know, I'm so freaked out that room. There were so many cockroaches in there. And so, and then I can't remember what happened after that, but then he, he, he was talking with us. And then a little later, a barometry came up to us and he, and he took us to this brand new room in the, um, I think it was the Lotus building then. And so we got to stay in this brand new room with no cockroaches. And for that, I have been eternally grateful. Well, I've been grateful ever since for his, for just for the kindness that he showed that he went to the trouble because I was like in a distraught state to, um, to help. And, and so he, he moved us into um, a really nice room and um and 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 that's just um an example of his kindness uh, that he was he was so kind and caring and he remembered us and um also my husband was telling me a story today he's in wales at the moment but he was saying that um when one time when we were in class in leicester that um there was one devotee there and he was very um, kind of eccentric and very outspoken and he always at the end of class he always had a comment to make um, that was kind of um, you know anyway so Maharaj gave this really nice class and at the end of the class um, this devotee said oh but Prabhupada said so and so so and so so and so in, in something or other and um, and so it was kind of, you know, a little challenging or whatever. And Bhakti Churu Maharaj just sat there and he just thought for, for a minute or two. And then he said, you, your devotion to Srila Prabhupada and Krishna is absolutely amazing. And, um, and so instead of getting into any kind of conflict or anything, he kind of just glorified this devotee and it was just amazing how how he dealt with the situation that he didn't you know he didn't get sucked into any controversy or arguing or you know saying whatever he he just humbly accepted and then he glorified this devotee who actually was always talking about Prabhupada and 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 anyway it was very nice and that's 
from my, my memory. I did, um, I saw him a few years ago, Bhakti Chur Maharaj, in, in, um, at the Festival Inspiration in New Vrindavan. But he, um, he was completely surrounded by so many devotees. And I wanted to thank him then again, because um, that I've always thought of him with, was for his kindness. He was so kind. Um, but I never got the chance, and that's all I wanted to say. Hare Krishna, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Bhakti Churu Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to His Holiness Bhakti Chudur Swami. Uh, this is not talk of Gopal. Um, I had the good fortune in 2016 to go to Ujjain uh, Temple uh, with Sukhada Devi, Pushkar Prabhu's wife and Premavati. So we were, went to Ujjain Temple and uh, we got such a wonderful, warm and welcoming reception um, from Maharaj and all of his disciples. They were so sweet and they took such good care of us. And the temple is magnificent. It's one of the most magnificent temples I've seen on the planet with a huge Goshala, a uh, big four-story um, Ayurvedic clinic and gorgeous temple. Reminded me a lot. The layout reminded me somewhat of um, Vrindavan temple layout. And uh, so magnificent. Uh, so in, in the last few days since Maharaj's departure, I noticed a few of his disciples from outside of the United States um, kind of lamenting or stating, oh Maharaj, why did you even go to the West? We wish you hadn't, like that. And uh, Maharaj himself answered that. Uh, in the Vyasa Puja books, if you read his last few years uh, homages to Srila Prabhupada, it's very clearly stated. In the 2015, um, in his homage, he tells the story how he was in Vrindavan uh, with Srila Prabhupada serving him. Prabhupada was ill. It was 1 a.m. in the morning. Prabhupada was not sleeping properly. So he couldn't sleep. So Maharaj was massaging Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet. And Prabhupada, uh, as Maharaj said, began to lament. And Prabhupada said, there is so much to do, but I am so sick and not able to do anything. And Maharaj said to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, what you have done is beyond anyone's imagination. You should not feel that there is anything left to be done. Just relax. And Prabhupada replied to him. This is a very important statement. He said, what I have done so far is 50%. The other 50% is to establish Varnashram. Not that everyone will become a devotee. For those who will not become devotees, we need Varnashram. So then Maharaj continues in his 2018 Vyasa Puja homage to Srila Prabhupada. He explains how in 2017, um, Bhakti Chiru Swami decided to support the Ministry of Cow Protection and Agriculture. He says, I know, Srila Prabhupada, how concerned you were about developing those two crucial areas of Vedic culture. Human civilization rests on these two gifts of Krishna in the form of Mother Nature and Mother Cow. So His Holiness Bhakti Churu Swami met with devotees involved in cow protection in the West. And he became aware 
that it was especially difficult in colder regions because when the cows grow old and stop giving milk, taking care of them in the winter became, is very expensive. Uh, and their numbers increase every year. So ordinary farmers sell their old cows to the slaughterhouse when they stop giving milk. But of course, this is out of the question for us. So caring for the older cows had become an ever increasing problem. So Maharaj thought if we could find a large piece of land where the weather is not so severe, uh, we could let the retired cows graze in the pasture throughout the year. So he looked for land in the southern part of the United States and came across a 116 acre property uh, that had previously been a Christian retreat center. So um, it's on a lake with the facilities for the retreat center still there and uh, outside of Deland, Florida and Maharaj got this property. He said, we decided to utilize the property not only for taking care of the cows, but also for preaching. So for me, that perfectly answers the question why Maharaj left his comfort zone and went out and got this farm and was, because he's trying to fulfill Prabhupada's cherished desire to establish Varnashram. It's very clear and uh, it's something that very inspiring for the rest of us. Um, the last thing I want to say is, um, this is from Maharaja's last year, 2019, Vyasa Puja, very uh, heartwarming and very eloquently put. This is his, his prayer to Prabhupada. So one afternoon, Maharaj was at Juhu Temple serving Prabhupada up in his quarters. And he told Prabhupada, although you taught me that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I still feel that I don't know him. However, Srila Prabhupada, I know you. You are my everything. All I want is to be with you, life after life. And without saying anything, Srila Prabhupada smiled at a, in a way that conveyed everything to Maharaj, Maharaj says. Um, Maharaj offered obeisances to him and said, Srila Prabhupada, although I am totally unqualified, please let me stay at your lotus feet forever, engaging my entire existence in your service. So uh, all glories to His Holiness, Bhakti Churu Swami, uh, breaking our hearts that he left the planet, but they have a glorious party in the spiritual world. That's the only thing that we can do, think to console ourselves and bereft of his saintly association. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Uh, Mother Nantaka Gopal, thank you so much for, for sharing. And uh, Mother Satisari, I'm glad we're able to get you on for you to share as well. Thank you for joining us. Um, and so uh, so we're, we're uh, just uh, slightly behind schedule. Uh, so we're, we're going to ask uh, Brother Radhasutta Prabhu um, and, and Krishna Priya, uh, Mother Krishna Priya, to, to join us next. And then next, the, the rundown from there is um, uh, Vrindavaneshwari, um, uh, Ranjit Prabhu. Uh, Vaikuntha Prabhu and uh, Mother Janavi. Um, and then that'll take us pretty close to the to the end of the um, remembrances. And I, I do want to encourage you, if you can, stay. Um, uh, Prangovinda Prabhu is going to share some very special things with us at 7.45 um, regarding uh, Bhakti Chumaraj's uh, uh, departure. Uh, so if you can stay, I, I would encourage you to, to, to do so. If you can't, this is being recorded and, and we'll, we'll have that recording available uh, for, for anyone who can. So, thank you.
I will uh, uh, first want to say that I appreciate all that's been said and all that I've heard elsewhere. It's been very good. A lot of statements so so nice about your lunch. And also I want to pray for you during the we're grounded as of course with Bill Marge down in Orlando. So I first met of uh, Marge by a cassette tape. It was the uh, Songs of the Vaishnava Charius. I don't remember exactly where I got it, but uh, that was my first contact with him. Uh, then the next contact was when I met my wife. Uh, when I got married in South Africa. And she had to stay there and uh, get her visa in order. And I came back and she let me take, I did not, other than hearing that song, Songs of Vaishnava Charges, I knew nothing of Dr. Charles Swami. So he had two uh, seminar series on uh, Bhagavad Bhagavatamita and Vaishnava Etiquette, six or seven cassette tapes each that I took back. It was going to be a couple of months before Christian Priya had come over. So uh, at that time, I was working uh, with the Department of Agriculture, and I was in the field by myself. And uh, I remember specifically uh, pulling out one of the tapes, had a little tape player, and listening to it. And uh, I just became convinced that this devotee I had been around for a while already at that time. This, this was uh, 1999, and I had been uh, around since I first met the devotees in 85. But I didn't have a spiritual master. And so uh, I started listening to that while eating lunch one day, and I became convinced this about the very pure. He's really he, he's further along than the others that I had been listening to. So I thought that. I'm going to you know, eventually try to become his disciple. Uh, next thing. <clears throat> so we, we got married and we had kids and we were busy at center for quite a while. And But I did start riding him. And uh, then I first physically met him in Charlotte, North Carolina in 2001. And, and like others have heard, the first, first instruct, instruction he gave me was, as I was giving him an envelope for the small donation I could give, he said, don't give with your left hand. I'm left-handed, and I wasn't very uh, confined to such etiquette. Uh, anyway, that was in Charlotte. But what was more significant was that was the weekend prior to 9-11. I got home. Monday, went back to work on Tuesday, and 9 11 occurred. And it's like, you know, kind of like thunders after somebody says something. So, kind of like a sign. That... So, of uh, what was next? Then, uh, then we would go to the festivals of inspiration and his uh, birthday, uh, Pop Pop Memorial Festival. So, I finally, uh, we had. Arranged, we had asked that we could have a darshan with Gurmaj in, in, in Vrindavan. And at that time, I asked him if I could inspire, and he said yes. He wanted me to uh, continue writing. So uh, I kept writing, tried to write at least once a month. I was involved in a uh, group in Tennessee at the time. And so what happened next was a uh, Rupanuga, not uh, Rupanuga Prabhupada's disciple, but Rupanuga Guramach's disciple, announced that uh, Guramach was going to give initiation at an upcoming uh, seminar he was given in Orlando to those that were aspiring. So he asked us to get letters of recommendation. So I asked uh, the local authority. I, I never lived in a little bit different. I never lived. In a temple, I visited temples and stayed in the temple for a month and set out at San Diego for a summer, not at the temple. But anyway, so uh, I asked the one who was mostly in charge of our group, who was initiated by Sasaroop, and he was glad. He felt there was 
four of us, and we were all, at that point, not initiated. And, uh, so he was glad to write a letter. And so uh, I was able to get initiated. That was 2008, down here in Orlando. Uh, <clears throat> Just a few notes that I was trying to write on things that I could say. I like that your minds have a good sense of humor. I think maybe that's one thing I haven't heard of the devotees saying how he really liked to uh, have a jovial, jovial nature. I was writing on some of the characteristics. He had a real zeal for Christian consciousness. Someone else mentioned uh, the Kadashi project here. Mentioned he's like, like uh, her guru Maharaj, uh, back to church, uh, and he was a spiritual warrior. He was uh, talking about the uh, event that happened recently regarding the temple in uh, uh, Brooklyn, New York. He was a scholar. He was a gentleman. He was a sage and a sannyas. He was a teacher. You know, despite uh, the recent uh, COVID infection that uh, took him from us, uh, he, he was, I felt he was very, he had very good health. Uh, you would see him walking, just what he was able to do day to day uh, was largely uh, demonstrated his good health. He's very caring, he's very sweet, he's very considerate. He would remember us, you know. He would remember the kids' names, and remember me. That was very insignificant. He's serious and also jovial. Like I said, uh, he liked to cut jokes. I remember one time coming out of the uh, <clears throat> Dobbin Temple of the Big Wooden Doors in Christian Priya. We were and myself were walking out. I don't remember what he said, but uh, or I don't remember. I said something, and he, I said it kind of like, Joking, you know, he took it and ran with him like back. You know, he liked it and that it was he liked that joke in nature. He you know added to it and maybe it was funny. Sorry, I can't remember exactly what was said, but uh he was also determined and very disciplined. So uh, I liked it that you were much had a good sense of humor. I was saying I liked to joke. Uh but he was also serious. Also at that same time, I remember. I suppose at the same time in uh, New Vrindavan, there was a uh, devotee, uh, young devotee, maybe he wasn't Indian like myself, maybe he wasn't so aware of the culture and he was kind of a, we we're in the temple room, it wasn't during a program or anything, but uh, uh, he was kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, cutting up, uh, what's the word for a, uh, with a girl, he was kind of like his girlfriend. He, you know, and this was many years ago, and he uh, obviously got married to this devotee, and this girl, getting get devotee, but uh, and I was like noticing Guru Maharaj just kind of averted his eyes because he knew that they weren't, just weren't aware of, you, you don't do girl boy uh, stuff like touching and joking with each other. So he, he was serious also. Uh, And I'm going to turn it over to Christian pretty, pretty quickly. Very much like the traditional Delti Purita, but apparently he was okay with those of us who weren't temple devotees wearing clean pants and shirts. But I will say that uh, uh, one time I went to the uh, Delan Temple, I think, to pick up Krishna Priya. And uh, I only came with like one pair of long pants because I knew I was going to go to the program the next morning. And, but there was a program that I didn't know or wasn't really planned at a yoga studio and I wore my long pants there and we were really having a good cure time. Bhakti Prima was there, Guru Maharaj didn't go with us, but Bhakti Prima went and uh, we had a really long, hot cure time. And so the next morning, instead of wearing those uh, long pants, I wore shorts and I know Guru Maharaj did not, he didn't say anything, but he, if looks could kill, you know, have a little more shorts again. Uh, I was thinking this remote, you know, out in the woods, but uh, that wasn't the way we were much looked at it. So I have another thing or two I can remember. Okay, uh, like I was saying, I wasn't a normal devotee. 
living in a temple and stuff, I feel like Guru Maharaj uh, gave me, uh, granted me membership into uh, uh, to ISKCON, and I really appreciate that. Uh, and I will say that uh, one thing that I liked was that at uh, our initiation, and there was 22 of us that were initiated in 2008 in uh, Orlando. Uh, he asked that we never leave his son. Uh, and he also said that uh, he realized a lot of us, we may not have a real intimate relationship with him. And that was fine, that he knew that the others would become, not that anyone else has become for me anyway, my most important, but he was aware that uh, others that uh, is of the importance of getting the siksha from many places, wherever you are. So I remember him saying that. I think that's about it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Accept my humble obeisances to all the Vaishnavas. Namo all ambition to all Krishna, the sound of the Trinity, the Trinity, the I had the good fortune of serving Marge in South Africa when he first arrived uh, the first week. I remember attending his lectures. At that time, I joined in Durban. Indra Maharaj was the temple president. Um, I remember feeling or the impression Marge made upon my heart was that wherever this person is, I want to follow. And whatever he says, I want to do. And uh, Rachel Prophet's mercy has allowed me that um, opportunity throughout um, my life thus far to serve marriage in South Africa in my core, and now in, with the, the land project, which is so dear to his heart. Um, he was the perfect father. He always made us feel loved and safe under his guidance. I remember taking um, Radhika and Giovanni to Ujjain for marriages um, for the Prabhupada Memorial Festival. And Marj took such good care of us that they said, Mama, we feel like princesses. They didn't actually want to come home. They wanted to stay in India. Marge, um, also we flew with Marge from Ujjain to Mayapur, and Marge arranged that we could stay um, in Tamil Krishna Maharaj's quarters. And um, you could feel it's a very special place to, to stay in. And we were so grateful for all the services he's showered upon us. Um, in a Jain March um, allowed me to, me and Archana actually, Archana's mercy, uh, allowed us to paint at the gold leaf doors of the altars, Lord Nishimadev's altar and Gorni Thai, God and Krishna. So we spent three nights um, staying up all night and seven in that way. But before we could start, he actually came down and was teaching us how to paint gold leaf. Um, and then in the land, Marge personally went out and bought 50 fruit trees and uh, positioned, he, he positioned each one where they should be and I would dig the holes and he would be over, <laughs> over watching over me, directing me how I should plant it. And then there was this one tree that was in the way, a big oak tree. And um, sycamore tree. Sycamore. And you cut it down. And we were struggling with the base of it. Yeah. And when we got... It was big. It was like 30 inches, 36 inches yeah. down at the base. And when we finally um, were able to extract it out of the earth, 
marched from his bedroom, started screaming, Harry Ball, Harry Ball, it's such joy. Where Marge was wa watching from up on the, his uh, room, which was, you know, up the hill a little bit. Yeah. And I remember when it finally, finally got that last bit and toppled it, the uh, big Harry Ball, and I was like, that room, Marge? Yeah. And that evening, um, after a hard day of working in the field, um, Gurmaj went into the kitchen and made us um, samosas and sat, um, sat and made sure we actually took on it Pishan. Um, yeah, he was such a person. That was also, I want to say, when Gurmaj uh, gave me a big hug. That was really nice. He also gave you an instruction and hopefully you will follow it. He wanted you to go down every week and um, help with the Deland project. Then we said, go much, every week will be a little too much. And then he said, every second week. Um, so now he's, the project is there. And so it's up to us. We pray for his blessing and the blessing of all the Vaishnavs that we can um, help in whatever way and assist the Dilan devotees and thereby making our life a success and pleasing marriage. Hare Krishna. Sorry. And glorious to Srila Bhakti Chara Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Bhakti Charu Maharaj, and all glories to Srila Prabhupada and all the assembled Vaishnavas. So I wrote down what I wanted to share to be concise and get all my thoughts in order. So I hope it's okay with all of you if I read them. And definitely these past few days, I have been thinking a lot about the nature of my relationship with Bhakti Charu Swami and some of the aspects that defined it. And one perspective that I realized is that not only was he my guru, my teacher, my spiritual father, but he, in a way, was also my spiritual father-in-law. I was introduced to him when I was 20 years old by my husband, Vishwambar Prabhu, and Bhakti Truswami was in so many regards his father already. He had a huge influence in his life as he had traveled with him and essentially raised him during his formative teen years. And by dint of this, Bhakti Tru Swami also welcomed and he accepted me into the family with open arms. And because of this, I was very fortunate to inherit a lot of the benefits of the closeness of their already established relationship. So this is something that I, I really appreciate and don't want to have taken for granted. One of the main personal services to him that I did in my life was to host him at our home. Wherever we lived on many occasions over the years, when he traveled to our area, first in Southern California, and then here in Alachua, Florida, he would always, many times he would stay with us. And this caused me no end of anxiety <laughs> because as you know, he has the highest of personal standards and he was keenly attuned to details of all kinds. So it was almost like preparing for a high-class king coming to stay at your home. We would prepare for weeks before he came. We would deep clean and organize and arrange. And once we even painted the entire interior of our home in preparation for him. I would purchase new bedding and towels and think about what dishes he would use. Will it be too hot? Will it be too cold? Will it be too noisy? Would he be comfortable? And that's not even talking about what kind of meals to cook <laughs> for him. And it was never clear who would be coming with him as part of his traveling party. Sometimes there would be a large group of devotees coming with him as he attracted people wherever he went. Where would they stay? So this was spiritual stress at its finest. And these were among the best, most truly satisfying times in my life because what better way is there to properly utilize whatever I have in my life as a mother and as a householder than to offer everything I have to my spiritual master? And I always felt like such a, a clumsy, uncultured American as well when he arrived. Uneducated and the more sophisticated etiquette and manners that he imbibed. Bhakti Truswami, as you all know, he was skilled and expert in the finer details of anything you can think of. And one of the first times that he came to visit in Laguna Beach, and I remember it was at Kosharupa and Badahari Prabhu's house, and 
I was preparing for his arrival and I was cutting up some fruit and I was cutting up a mango. And somebody else here had also mentioned the mango. So a mango again. And I know I was making a big mess of this mango. Nobody had taught me how to cut up a mango. And I was thinking in my mind, uh oh, I know he's going to walk in that door any moment and he's going to see me making this mess of this mango. And sure enough, a moment later, he comes in and he observes and he says in his melodious yet humor filled voice, Brindavan Ashbri, what are you doing to that poor mango? <laughs> and then he comes and shows me how to do it properly, cutting it in little squares to pop it out. And so that was one thing I was thinking about. And in the earlier days, uh, when I was a new mother of our first born son, Krishnadas, he was only just a few months old and he was staying at our home. And I was nervous as a new mother with a, a, a sannyasi, my spiritual master coming to stay in our little home. And um, if you knew back then, Krishnadas, he was a big baby. He was a heavy baby. And so I had the habit for a while of carrying him like facing out like on my hip because he was heavy, you know? So I was holding him on my hip like this facing out and Bhakti Tru saw me, saw me doing that. And he said, Vrindavan Ashri, don't hold him like that. Hold him, turn him around and hold him to your heart. Hold him facing you so he can feel your mother's love. <sighs> Sorry. Um, and he actually also even gave me a diaper changing tip one time. <laughs> so uh, is there anything he didn't know? I don't know. Um, he really infused my life, um, very much a part of who my husband is, um, who our children are, and really at the foundation of our relationships. The way he lived is a very clear example of bhakti yoga in action. Personal loving relationships with each other, Srila Prabhupada, it was always Srila Prabhupada um, and Krishna. Do all things, even small things with presence, attention to detail and generosity. For all of his accomplishments, his elevated position and status, he was always approachable, gentle, kind, compassionate, interested, and life was so joyous in his company. And whenever he left our home, there was a very palpable feeling of emptiness. And he showed us this amazing secret that by his living example, that when you share love from a deep spiritual place, it never runs out because it's abundant by nature and it just grows and exponentially multiplies. And this is the legacy that he has left us with, is how to live a life of care and deep commitment to others in Krishna consciousness. And I have as my task to follow however I can in his footsteps. And this care that I had the good fortune to receive, I know that it's not mine to keep because the best gifts are the ones shared with others. And so it's my job is to pass that on. So thank you. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me? Yes, yes Prabhu, we can hear you. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, Prabhu. Oh, can you good. hear me? So let me switch off my TVs. Yes, Prabhu, we can hear you. Good. Can you hear me now? So I wanted to speak a little about my association with Bhakti Chara Maharaj who was such an exemplary personality. At the time, I was unaware of his qualities in so many ways. I first met Bhakti Charo Maharaj in 1980 in the Delhi temple. And he was there uh, as a guest for just basically the day and he was discussing with some other devotees about a schism that was about to happen in ISKCON. It was one of the first schisms that took place after Srila Prabhupada's departure. And he was there with Sarva Bhavana Prabhu, a very good friend of his. I know they, they, were, they had joined in Germany together, I understand. And so, 
he, uh, that was my first encounter with him. And then that later that year, I went to Mayapur to work with Surabi Swami on the Mayapur Samadhi construction. And one of the things was we had an office in Calcutta and it was a little apartment. It was, uh, you know, and, and in that uh, building, which was rented, I believe, by the Calcutta temple, uh, a bunch of devotees lived there. Pancharatna lived there, Shravanananda, uh, the astrologer Shamasundar, myself, and then on the upper floor, Bhakti Charu Maharaj had his quarters, and he at the time was translating the books of Srila Prabhupada. And I had very little uh, real understanding of what it means to translate Srila Prabhupada's books into a foreign language. Of course, for him, Bengali, and, uh, but he had to translate from English. And it's only later on in my service with, with the BBT, uh, when I got to meet with some of the translators and got to see all the difficulties that they have in translating from English into these foreign languages, it's only now really that I appreciate, you know, the service that Maharaj did at that time. But one of the nice things was that Maharaj was so welcoming and kind. And every now and again, he would invite us all for prasadam. And he would do the two specialities. He would cook Chinese and Italian. Which, so which day it was, uh, you know, we, we, would, uh, we would wonder, oh, oh, it's Italian today. Oh, it's Chinese today. Oh, great. And of course, it was always incredibly delicious. And, and, and it was always, you know, at that time, Maharaj, he wasn't a GBC. He wasn't a guru. He was just kind of regular one of the guys, you know. And uh, so it was, it was a different kind of mood uh, to what it became later. Uh, there was much less on reverence. And so we had a lot of fun there in, in the Rainy Park office in Calcutta. And uh, then we would go to, I would travel back and forth between Calcutta and Mayapur at that time as part of my service. But uh, so that was uh, extremely nice. And I always remember that the uh, bottom floor of the building was uh, the uh, uh, accountants for the Calcutta temple. And one of the gentlemen there was very cultured, Mr. Das Gupta, he was a very educated man. And when the festival would come up for Rabindranath Tagore, uh, he would go to Shantini Ketan, which was the, uh, you might say the pilgrimage place of all the followers of Rabindranath Tagore. And, you know, it, it's a massive uh, thing uh, because Rabindranath Tagore is so much uh, revered by all Bengalis because he was the first Indian to receive the Nobel Prize for literature. And uh, he established this university at Shantini Ketan. And I always had this understanding that if, uh, Krishna consciousness and Gaudiya Vaishnavism were to really take root in Bengal, a sign would be that Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur would become as popular as Rabindranath Tagore. And in fact, uh, due to Maharaj's translations of Srila Prabhupada's books, now it's coming to pass that Srila Prabhupada is eclipsing Rabindranath Tagore. And that's that's a very consequential thing in, in uh, understanding uh, the, the situation of our preaching movement in Bengal. And it's something that, that uh, I feel a lot uh, because of my time spent there, the years that I spent there. And so fast forward because after my service in uh, Bengal and Calcutta and Mayapur, uh, 
I didn't meet with Maharaj for many years. And then uh, uh, we met again uh, on a few occasions in Los Angeles. But then really uh, our association became more uh, when uh, I met with him at the home of Guru Garanga Prabhu. And I went there a few times when Maharaj was in town. And one of the things that I understood uh, and that very few people do understand because Maharaj was so open and so friendly and so warm and a very emotional person, a uh, very emotionally giving person was the quality of his intellect that he had, he had a real intellectual background. And I remember I quoted, you know, we were talking about the material world, I guess, and I quoted some quote from an English poet, T.S. Eliot, and he immediately responded with something that that, that, that poet, uh, with a different poem of that poet. And it sort of blew my mind because, you know, what do you, what do you think? Uh, and so it just struck me that Maharaj was a real intellectual in many ways, even though we have this feeling of him as, as such a warm emotional person and one doesn't think that warm emotional people are, are actually very, very advanced intellectuals, but Maharaj was that. And um, I just discovered today because, uh, you know, looking, looking up his bio that we were born two and a half weeks apart, actually. <laughs> which is funny, I guess, you know, what, when, when, when one sees these things as uh, coincidences, but Prabhupada also believed in coincidences. He believed that actually uh, his uh, birth in 1896 coincided with Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's first uh, approach to Western society. And so, um, so I take that to heart and, uh, then, uh, of course, we met also here in the home of Prabir, as he mentioned, and we had very, very, very uh, warm. And finally, the thing that I'd like to end with is uh, my last visit to Deland, my only visit to Deland, actually, was to meet with him uh, because he wanted to assign uh, the rights to his biography of Srila Prabhupada to the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust. Uh, not so many ISKCON authors do that, but Srila Prabhupada was such a, uh, an ISKCON man, a BBT man, and Bhakti Chara Maharaj, he, he was so much, uh, he wanted to do that, and so I had to bring the papers for him to sign. And, and uh, you know, this is it's a very meaningful thing that, that he would do that uh, for the movement, for Srila Prabhupada and for the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust as, as, as he was such a great translator of all the books. So, Bhakti Chara Maharaj Ki Jai, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, can you hear us? Yes, Prabhu, we can hear you. Okay, great. Sorry, we're not so technically uh, together. So, um, yeah, when I spoke with Vishwambar Prabhu this morning, he kindly um, said we could also speak um, for a few minutes. I tried to think of how to be concise and, you know, trying to think of some of Maharaj's qualities are very immense, and I was trying to think of some that I maybe had noticed personally. And as the devotees were speaking, it's been wonderful to hear everyone's appreciation of Maharaj and all of those qualities and, and more have been you know, discussed at length. But uh, I was, you know, one thing I, uh, I noticed a lot, Maharaj was very kind, he's very considerate of others very 
total dedication to Srila Prabhupada and his mission and his devotees and just love, his love, like he dealt with people very lovingly. Of course, the other qualities are there too, like his intellectualism, his scholarship, so many. But anyway, those were a few that stuck out to me. And um, Prabhu, do you mind speaking just a little bit louder? I think your microphone's having a hard time picking you up. Oh, sure. Uh, should we bring it? Uh, sorry, we're just- That, that might help a little. Okay. Is that any better? Uh, uh, yes, please continue. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, so so anyway, um, I was also thinking as we were here together tonight, uh, appreciating Maharaj, how, you know, we wherever we are, we saw, at least personally, I saw Maharaj in California for some years. We lived there and then here in Florida, Alachua, and later in Mayapur, India, later in the land and Alachua like that. Uh, once or twice we went up and saw him in North Carolina. But all over the world, probably right now, um, people are glorifying Maharaj, you know, like he saved a temple in France, he built a temple in Mujain, like everywhere all over the world, he was interacting with so many devotees and projects and group of groups of devotees and you know, always with just the one pointed really dedication to Srila Prabhupada. I was listening, Mahatma Prabhu spoke about Dr. Trumaraj yesterday in a class that he was giving. And he was, you know, pointing out how Prabhupada said, Iskhan is my body, and how Dr. Trumaraj was so dedicated to, to Iskhan, um, really in a pronounced way, you know, like when we say someone's a Prabhupada man. And certainly that's true for so many devotees and Bhakti Trumaraj, I don't think there's anybody who would contest it for a second. You know, um, personally, I think I first met him in 1979. He, I believe it was his first tour of America and he also came to San Diego where I was stationed. And, you know, you could see, I think he gave a morning class and then very refined, you know, very sweet, very wonderful sannyasi, very, charismatic, inspiring. And I could also see he was very refined. So that evening, um, Yudhisthira Prabhu, who for even now he uh, is very involved in outreach to the broader public in the San Diego area and arranging preaching programs. And so he uh, arranged a program for Maharaj and I was invited to tag along. So we took Maharaj to place called Ocean Beach. The temple's in the Pacific Beach and the next beach south is Ocean Beach. So at that time, Ocean Beach was like the last stand of the hippie generation in San Diego. So we took Maharaj to this program and I was wondering how it was going to go off, you know, because you could see Maharaj was a very, very refined person. And hippies, of course, I came from that background as well, but, you know, not really known for such kind of place we went in and, you know, you'd expect to find the marijuana roaches in the ashtrays and you kind of hope there's not a bust before you get out of there, you know. So we brought Maharaj and there were a lot of hippies there. And Maharaj just, you know, he sang so sweetly, he spoke so sweetly and just interacted with all the hippies in such a sweet way, you know, and just made a wonderful impression and was very nice to us. And we all, you know, went back to the temple at the end. And I don't remember, but the next time that I saw a lot more of him was a few years later in the mid eighties. I think Shesha Prabhu briefly touched on this. It, it was a very difficult time. You know, this kind of went through a lot of growing pains and a lot of very senior people were either leaving or changing ashrams and, you know, going away from their disciples. A lot of crisis of faith was going on and there was a lot of confusion. We were a very new movement. We were, you know, Prabhupada had only been gone for about, you know, five, six, seven, eight years. And Anyway, Bhakti Shurumaraj, he was just going all over, probably all over the world, certainly all over North America. And I understood all over the world. And he was just giving so many seminars about Srila Prabhupada as our founder, Acharya, about our relationship with Srila Prabhupada, about Shiksha and Diksha Gurus, and about the importance of ISKCON, how ISKCON is Prabhupada's body, and just really you know, how we're connected to the whole Guru Parampara, just really putting everything in perspective, you know, to sort of help people through that difficult period and very, very effective. And 
he had no other motive than just trying to keep the ship stable, you know? And I was really appreciating the depth of his attachment to Srila Prabhupada, you know, how he was doing that. And then, you know, in the 90s, he was coming, you know, we, we know he had read somewhere in a book about the people of the year from that year. And he was thinking how Srila Prabhupada should be having this type of fame in the world that people all over the world should be knowing about Srila Prabhupada and his contribution. So he began the, the Abhay Charan series. And boy, that, you know, that was such a huge service. I remember when they came through California, they did a lot of filming in LA. Uh, we just tried to help us whatever small way we could. One of the, the video editors was staying with us. We had a little preaching center, South California. And we were around him a bit at that time. And, you know, he was traveling with like 30, 40 people, you know, actors and actresses and film crews and like, you know, trying to find places to have everyone stay and feed everybody and keep the cameras rolling and keep the Lakshmi flowing to produce this whole thing, you know, and, and it, it was amazing. I was, I was just amazed by, you know, his energy and fortitude and, you know, he, all this for the glorification of Srila Prabhupada. Then like in, you know, 2000s, I think early 2000s, he was developing this huge, uh, I've never been there, but I've heard so much about it, Project in Ujjain, like that, you know, and then he started in the land, you know, coming to America. And I hadn't had the good fortune of much of his association, although I used to see him in Mayapur uh, pretty much annually for some years. Our family spent some years that their children growing up and, and things. And although you know, we're just rank and file devotees, you know, and, but because we, you know, he's, his kindness, you know, and his love for the devotees, whenever we would see him after a long time, you know, he would just come up, some other devotees have also mentioned, and just give you a big hug, you know, and when he would hug you, you would just feel his love, and, you know, you would just feel his, his love, you know, for Krishna, and for you, and for Srila Prabhupada, and it was the most heartwarming experience, um, and very spiritually encouraged experience. And he would always inquire, how are you? How's your family? Is there anything I can do? Do you need anything? You know, and it wasn't just, you know, like hyperbole, like when you, you know, like the flight attendant or something, it was very genuine. He was ready to do whatever he could for any devotee that he could possibly help. And, you know, that's, then in 2017, 18, um, Mother Narutaka Gopal was mentioning how he was starting the, um, the land project and his concern for the protection of cows. And I have a close friend, Kalakanta Prabhu, uh, not Kalakanta who runs Krishna House, but he's from Brazil. And he was given this service as the Minister of Cow Protection and Agriculture. And Bhakti Charu Maharaj, I guess at the GBC meetings, noticed that he was given this very big international responsibility, but he'd only been given, you know, like I think $2,500 a year to carry on a whole mission. Of course, he's married with a wife and two children. So, you know, he was able to live in Mayapur on that. And then he had to figure out how to travel all over the world and visit all the Goshalas and try to raise the standards and, you know, try to do all this amazing service. And Bhakti Trumaj just really thought, you know, this is such an important service. This is such a sincere devotee. How can I help him? And he just jumped right in and he raised all these funds and he helped get the ministry off the ground really. And then he thought, how can we get continued support? And he came up with a whole idea to have like a, like a whole program where people would become members of the ministry and they would send out boxes each month called bhakti boxes with different items from cow protection and ghee and incense and, you know, moke sweets and things. And he just, I think that year he was even like chairman of the GBC EC committee or something, but it wasn't like he didn't have anything to do, but he just jumped into it. And like he set up, you know, these programs and he had us call temples. We, we went to Atlanta. We, we did like three or four days of programs in Atlanta to try to get the membership going for the Cal protection. We went to Los Angeles. It was really starting to roll. And then three there, or four days of programs in Atlanta to try to get the membership something going. happened. <laughs> Anyway, I'm probably running out of time. So uh, at, at least I, I just wanted to say that how wholeheartedly he jumped into that in the middle of all his other responsibilities to help this uh, devotee who was trying to do his ministry and to help the cows. So, you know, whenever I've been around Bhakti Jumaraj, you, you just see nothing but 
nonstop energy and devotion to Prabhupada and his mission and devotees. So, Dr. Trimaraj Kijai. Krishna, dear devotees, our obeisances, glories to Bhakti Chiru Swami, our glories to Srila Prabhupada. I just have a little sweet mama story. <laughs> um, Bhakti Chiru Swami, um, I knew him, or he came to San Diego around 1987. My first uh, service to him was, our first service was Grihasas, as we had a little um, apartment next to the temple. And we had one guest room. So Bhakti Chiru Swami came one time and we were able to host him. My husband took care of him. I would go next door to the Brahma Trini Ashram. And um, ever since then, we just had such a sweet relationship, um, like everybody felt from him. He always made me feel just fully loved and appreciated and was just always very kind. Um, Throughout the years, he came and visited us in our home in Alachua and did a program here raising funds for the Jain temple. And uh, then in Mayapur, when we were living there, I would run into him in the temple and he always, he'd be walking with the whole crew of you know, his disciples. And if he saw me, he would actually come right up and stop and say, Hare Krishna Mataji, how are you doing? And just make you feel like your life was so important, even though I'm such an insignificant devotee. But the sweet story I wanted to share was um, when my husband was acting as temple president in, in San Diego and we moved back down there from our little preaching center in Encinitas, we had a home and I had Vrindavani, she was about three years old and I just had our son Balaram, he was a baby. And we used to have, um, every time the, the Abhay Charan um, videos would come out, we would have the devotees come over to our house and we would watch them and we, we would just wait for the next one to come out and it was just so nectar but he came this one time and um, we had a program at our home and um, he loved Chinese food at that time <laughs> <laughs> so someone cooked him this amazing Chinese meal and we had a program out in the garden and somehow I guess Balaram was asleep because I was able to be there and I don't know how the conversation came around but I asked him the question how does a, a new mom who's um, 24 seven on call all night, you know, breastfeeding and being with the baby and then all day taking care of the house and the cooking. And how, how, do, how, do we, how do I continue with trying to chant my 16 rounds? And Bhakti Chiru Swami said, oh yeah, here in America, you don't have, you don't have maid servants. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cute. And um, he said, so you just always, continue to try to faithfully chant your 16 rounds. He said, but just try to be like the gopis and in all your housework, try to always remember Krishna and, and sing to Krishna and always remember him. And um, he just, you know, it just consoled me. It just said, okay, I can relax and I'll always try to chant my 16 rounds, but I'll just try to always remember Krishna. And that was just very sweet. Um, and then, um, I, I actually just wanted to um, share a uh, uh, my last uh, talk with him or meeting with him was when he came to Alachua recently, last time he came. And uh, I, I got to just see him briefly at the temple. And I asked him, mm, Vrindavani was going up to New Vrindavan for the GBC college and my husband was nearby not really nearby, but he was in Norfolk. And um, he, um, he, I was hoping he could go and visit him while he was there. So I was asking him what his schedule was and told him Vrindavan was going to be there. And then, so he, uh, one day I was in Norfolk helping my husband. All of a sudden I get this phone call and I answer the phone and it's Bhakti Chiru Swami on the other end. He said, Hare Krishna, Mataji, it's Bhakti Chiru Swami. And I was like, wow, Hare Krishna, what a surprise. And and he told me that, you know, you had asked me to speak with your, your daughter while I was here and here she's right here. And I just want to let you know, she's very happy and she's contributing so nicely and it's wonderful to be here. And um, we actually have had such a good session here that we wanted to have a reunion in Dale Land with all the group here. And I want to personally invite you to come and Vrindavani has agreed to help um, organize that. Of course, the COVID happened, so that never happened, but he's just so personal and loving and, um, 
Vrindavani actually got a personal darshan with him and I just wanted to read her offering because it's, it's a very beautiful offering and kind of says everything. So I'll, I'll read her offering. Dear Bhakti Chu Swami Maharaj, please accept my most humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your years of dedicated service to him. Today there is an eclipse and it feels fitting and prophetic, a reflection on the gross material level of the loss the world experienced this morning in the eclipse and loss of a brilliant shining moon like yourself. I've heard many people describe you today as a true Prabhupada man, a loyal and chaste disciple and true and trusted son of his divine grace. I reflected that in so many ways, you exhibited qualities demonstrated by Srila Prabhupada. You are an enthusiastic and innovative preacher, a renowned Kirtaniya, a brilliant organizer and manager an excellent Bengali cook, a translator and writer, a brilliant philosopher who understood Shastra on a deep level and a true gentleman. Most especially, I thought about how Srila Prabhupada was so loved by his disciples, not simply for his brilliance, his genius, his philosophy, but for the genuine and deep love and consideration he showed to everyone. He was a true personalist and humble lover and well-wisher of every living entity. In your perfect Vaishnava etiquette, your extraordinary consideration of everyone you came across, you extended this most important quality of Srila Prabhupada to everyone. You've been a well-wisher of my family for many years, since before I was born. You've given guidance, encouragement, and love. Your genuine interest in our well-being and your desire to hear the details of our situation endeared you to us and made us feel so encouraged in Krishna consciousness. At various times throughout the years, you've taken time to acknowledge me and inquire after myself and my family. I was always amazed that you recognized me, had time for me, and seemed to genuinely care. I myself have difficulty placing faces and remembering people who I meet. And I interact with no, and I interact with nowhere near the number of people you do. When seeing someone out of context, it is so hard to remember who they are. But I've spoken to you in Mayapur, in Alachua, in Sydney, and in New Vrindavan, and each time you quickly remembered who I was and remembered details about my family's life. Thank you for these moments of your time, which you so graciously bestowed me. Most recently, I spoke to you in New Vrindavan. You had just seen my mother, and she had told you that I would be in New Vrindavan, where you were traveling next. Out of respect for her desire that we see each other, you went out of your way to invite me to a private darshan and so kindly inquired how I was doing and offered to answer any questions I had. I didn't really know what to say to you. I was just so overwhelmed by your kindness. I asked you how I could maintain enthusiasm and devotional service. Then you answered that I should associate with serious devotees and should listen to recordings of Srila Prabhupada speaking because even more than reading his books, this allows us to hear the urgency in his voice and inspires us to assist him in his mission. I'm so insignificant, but still I feel so affected by your departure. It is we who require your prayers and mercy now more than ever, as we navigate how to survive without your guidance. In prayer to be your servant, Vrindavani Devi Dasi. So I just wanted to share that because I think it, it shares a lot of how we feel just so personally loved and appreciated. And he always appreciated everybody. And I think it's because his spiritual qualities of really being able to see they were each a unique individual spirit soul who's so dear to, to Krishna and to Srila Prabhupada, no matter how insignificant or great or how many services we have, he makes everyone feel completely valued and it's the most lovable quality and we will miss him so much. And I I'll offer all my condolences to his dear disciples and um, all glories to Bhakti Chu Swami Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, uh, John and Vien, Vaikuntha Prabhu. Uh, that was that was wonderful. Thank thank you so much for for sharing with us. Um, I I, I want to apologize. We are running a little behind schedule, and I I just want to confirm that before I speak, I am scheduled to speak next. But um, Prangovinda Prabhu, are you okay that we're going a little bit late uh, for for your uh, for your talk? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you so much. And um, I'll, I'll try. I'll try to keep it brief. Um, it's hard. <laughs> um, I, uh, as 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 Brenda had mentioned, um, and when uh, in, in her beautiful um, uh, memories of uh, uh, of Bhakti Trumaraj or our Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Trumaraj Swami, um, 
I, I had the incredible opportunity to um, be with him um, from when I was about 14 um, years of age. Um, and uh, he profoundly impacted me um, through that. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of an interesting story. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and talking, and, and, and again, just, just coming back to this, this, this theme that we hear of the incredible amount of care that he had for everyone. And it wasn't just words, it was demonstrated time and time again. Um, and the, 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 the opportunity I had to meet him was because he had actually come to Laguna because um, some um, friends of his um, had had a personal family tragedy. And he came to Laguna to, to visit with them because of what had occurred um, just recently for them. And, um, and in, in that time, um, my, my mother and I were, were there in Laguna Beach Temple. Um, and uh, my mother is sentimental. Um, uh, and uh, she had heard um, uh, Bhakti Shumar speak of, of the pastimes of Lord Nityananda and how... Um, he had, uh, how Nitin, Lord Nitin had been given to a sannyasi. And so anyway, so somehow she had the opportunity to, to, to drive to the airport with, with Bhakti Um and, and they were talking and, and, and she, she was just saying, you know, what, you know what, what can I do for you? And then he said, you can give me your son. <laughs> and she said, yes. Um, I don't know how serious this conversation was, but the result is that in a short period of time, within a couple months, I was on my way to Europe to, to be with Bhakti Chiru Swami. 14-year-old um, kid, I, did, I didn't know anything. I never left America. I never left California or Texas, really. But um, And so um, I, I met up with him in, in Radhadesh in Belgium. And so when, when there's some mention of Radhadesh, it brings back a lot of memories for me because that's when I had my first experiences directly serving with him. Um, he had a longtime servant um, uh, 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 prior to this, uh, a, a wonderful devotee by the name of Glokana. Um, and for um, some reason, he had to go back to India. And I was up next um, to, to, be, to be the person to personally care for him. And um, uh, it, was, it was a monumental task. Um, but he was, he was exceedingly forgiving for all of my faults and all of my just inabilities. Um, we heard a little bit about the nettle behind um, Radadesh Castle. Um, and it was my job to pick that nettle. Um, and so I would go out in that field and I'd pick it. And, and he, he, somebody told him it was good as a tea as well. And so it was kind of a daily task to pick the nettle for the tea. And I remember one time I, I, I made it, I gave it to him. Um, and at some point I went to get it back. And at the bottom of the cup was a worm because I hadn't properly cleaned the nettle. But he didn't say a word to me about it. Just, it just left it there. I fully understood what was going on from, from that. Um, there was another time where, you know, I, I mixed up salt and sugar. Um, so uh, he had some tea with salt instead of sugar. Um, didn't say anything to me about it either, but I, I knew what was going on because it wasn't, it, it, he didn't drink it. And I, I realized what I'd done. Um, but he, he um, in, in those days, uh, the, the, this is the late 80s, early 90s, um, uh, this is a time when, when, um, uh, those of us that have known, um, uh, our for, for a very long time, there, there was an evolution over time. And, and, and in those, those earlier years, at least, at least for me, um, he was pretty strict. Um, he had very, um, very high expectations for things. And if you didn't meet that mark, he let you know. <laughs> um, I, I, I like to say that I, I got the dunda a little bit in a, in a, not, not in a literal sense, but, in, but in, in, a, in a personal sense in terms of knowing when I had not done the right thing. Um, but it was always balanced with this, this overwhelming sense of love that he had for me. I mean, he, I, I just, I, I felt that I, I just, here was a person who I could absolutely feel no matter what, um, 
was was there for me, was was caring for me in in in, in anything I needed. I mean, um, I, I I think I think if you talk to many um, uh, devotees, um, whether they're they're directly disciples or not, just the the many instances in which he just took care of what would could be considered mundane things for them, because he cared. He had a heart for everyone. Um, and and um, you know the, this this uh, the, the this term you know somebody will give you the 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 the, the shirt on their back. Um, for me, he literally gave me the shoes on his feet. Um, I, I told this story the other day actually, but but to me it just it just really demonstrates to me just the heart that he had and the care he had. Um, we were we were traveling through France and we we met up with some a uh, group of devotees that had a sankirtan camp. Um, it, was, it was a primitive situation, and and so um, uh, uh, in, in somehow or another, I lost my shoes. I don't know where they went. And he gave me his shoes, and and he insisted that I wear them. And I, I just I couldn't understand it. I was like, okay, but I I, I took them. He told me I had to. Um, th there wasn't that pretense that I'm your guru. You can't do that. In in the circumstance, it was necessary. He would do whatever was needed. And, and he just always looked out for me constantly, no matter where we were, what we were doing. And yes, I had a, I had a very hard job to do, to, to care for him um, and, and, and an awesome responsibility. And he, he was, he, he, but he was just so heartfelt in, in everything. Um, and and I, can, I can reflect on, on who I am today. And and it's it's a it's a direct reflection of of him of of what he he invested in me. Um, the 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 example he showed. Um, the the the, the warmth, the, the just 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 everything. Um. Is is all due to him. Um, I was I was talking to a to a god brother of mine the other day, and I was just saying that I I know for a fact that I would not still be a devotee within Prabhupada's movement if it wasn't for him. Um, it, so it, you know we go through the trials and tribulations of life, and it's that it's that personal connection, that relationship with him. The desire not to want to disappoint him that has kept me connected and kept me doing what I do. Um, and that that that's that's the effect, that's the impression that he he makes on on us. And and I've heard it time and time again, just constantly. He makes you he makes you feel like you're relevant, like you're 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 worthy. Um and and we're gonna miss that. And I, and I feel as 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 disciples, as 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 um, um, as as those of us that, that have had the opportunity to be with him, it, it's our responsibility to carry forth that 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 legacy of care, um, because that's what he wanted. That's what he showed constantly. That's what he demonstrated to us, and it's our responsibility to carry that forth um, as his legacy. Um, I, I was, um, I was really touched actually when Rita and Enemar spoke, um, on the, on the day that he, that he, that he had passed and, and he talked very personally about the fact that, that Bhakti Shumaraj's, um, connection with him just some years ago when, when there was, you know, a lot of question with Krishna West and this and that and all the, all these things. And he, he, he directly attributed Bhakti Shumaraj's um, reaching out to him, inviting him to come to 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 meet with him, um, uh, uh, truly listening to him and hearing him, and feeling understood by somebody, and in addition, instead of pushing away, bringing him closer, asking him to know, be part of the GBC, be part of ISKCON. No matter no no matter what the differences are, just be part of it. 
And, and that's how he was. I mean, I, in, in so many different instances, I, you know, traveling with him, he, he would reach out to devotees that were a little estranged, like they, you know, um, and, and he would want to get together with them because he, he really, for, for the, the, the recesses of his heart, he wanted them to be back. He wanted them to be back with ISKCON and he would try so hard. And I would say different instances, he would try and try and try and it, it didn't always work out, but he never stopped trying because, because he, he was so committed to this. And, and, and to me, that's just another takeaway of what our responsibility is, the legacy he leaves as well is this sense of inclusion, um, not, not pushing people away, finding ways for them to be included, finding ways for them to remain, not finding reasons for them to be pushed out, um, is, is, is a legacy that he has left. And I think it's our responsibility to carry, carry, carry it forward. Um, and and th those are just kind of two, two main things for me. Um, I mean, I, I could talk forever about so many different exchanges and instances where, where um, he just uh, um, uh, just just impacted me in so many ways but but this is this is one thing that that, that has been kind of top of mind for me of late as, as I reflect on 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 him um, and what what he left us um, and, and and what we're gonna miss um, and I and I, I know, from from the the ultimate perspective, he's with us. He's he's here, but there's there's certain things that that aren't here anymore. And um, I think more than anything, I just I I when I think about it, I just I I miss the little things. I miss the the pat on the back, the or even more recently, just just a hug um, from him because it was that warmth and that feeling that um. Uh, we're not going to have any more, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll carry forth. We'll do what we what we have to do, and I just I just pray to him that you know we can we can carry forth his legacy and and do it properly and do it in a way that he'd be proud. So um, anyway, thank you, um, uh, uh, Prang Govinda Prabhu's um, uh, uh, next. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Can you hear me? Yes, Prabhu, we can hear you. Oh my Jnana Timiranda Sagenanjana Salakaya Chakshu Nitam Jena Tashmai Sri Guru Venama Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Simhate Bhakti Vedanta Saminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sunnavadi Paschata De Shatari name Bancha Kalpata Rubesha Kripas in the Paivacha Pudita Nampavani Bhavishna Vibhonamono Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhunita Nanda Sia Deita Gadadhar Sibashadi Gora Bhakta Binda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Um, looks like we're losing you there, Prangavinder Express my condolences to our beloved spiritual mentor Bhakti Charu Maharaj. And I like to also thank Vishambar uh, Prabhu and uh, the group for giving me chance to share my wonderful divine experience with at this last few days. So today we have gathered to celebrate the disappearance from an external, <coughs> His Holiness passed away in an Orlando hospital having 
contracted COVID-19. In the life of an exalted Vaishnava, however, nothing is ordinary. It was a remarkable departure, full of grace. It was my good fortune to come in contact with Maharaj in 1979 at the Krishna We greeted each other that we had a close family connection. I instantly felt very connected and very much protected. In those early days and throughout my entire spiritual life, he encouraged Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. What happened? Uh, one moment, please. Am I on? Uh, Prangu, Prangu Prabhu, we're having a little bit of a technical issue um, hearing um, uh, with the, I think when it's simultaneously when you have video and voice, just because of your connection, um, it might actually work better without the video and only voice. And we can see if we can hear you clearly because it, it keeps cutting out on us. Hmm. How do I do that? Let's see. Uh, Stop the video now. Yeah. So, so right now we can hear you. We just won't be able to see you, but um, I think better than us not being able to hear you at all. Okay, can you hear me now better? Yes, I mean, we'll, we'll okay. go ahead and try from here. Okay. So I'll, <laughs> I first uh, paid my obeisances. So from an external point of view, His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami passed away in an Orlando hospital having contracted COVID-19. In the life of an exalted Vaishnava, however, nothing is ordinary. It was a remarkable departure, full of grace. It was my good fortune to come in contact with Maharaj in 1979 at the Krishna Balaram Temple, Vrindavan, India. We greeted each other and soon realized that we had a close family connection as a cousins. I instantly felt connected and very much protected in those early days and throughout my spiritual life. He encouraged, guided, and counseled me and ultimately kept me in Krishna consciousness. When the devotees suggested I visit Maharaj in his final hours, I grabbed the opportunity to serve someone I loved and admired. This was indeed, I felt, Krishna's mercy, Prabhupada's mercy. So recently, I mean, last couple of days, many devotees have inquired what happened in those final hours. So I'll try to explain my best to describe those auspicious event with clarity and chastity. At approximately 1.20 a.m. on Saturday, 4th of July, Guru Gauranga Prabhu called me and inquired what time I would be driving to see Bhakti Charuswami. Since it was the disappearance day of Sanatana Goswami and Guru Purnima, very auspicious day. And I was casual to give the morning class in Alachua Ishkan Temple here. I mentioned that I would leave after the class. Then I went to rest, but then 2.30 a.m. Ras Bihari Prabhu from London suggested I go immediately after Mangalarti. After Mangalardi Darshan, I came back home and I received call from Maharaj's few disciples who were all adamant for me to go. So I collected all auspicious paraphernalia, including Ganges water, neck beads, and the Brahman thread, Mahatulsi leaves, picture of Srila Prabhupada and Sri Sri Radha Madhav, 
Radha Shyam Sundar, then left for the hospital. While I was driving to the hospital, I <clears throat> received a call from His Holiness Radhanath Swami. And Maharaj has inspired me to do this treasured service with complete devotion and dedication. The conversation with Radhanath Maharaj was overwhelming and left me in tears. Feeling unqualified, but blessed to render some service to a great soul. I remember various verses of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which remind us about the time of death. And this crucial juncture in the journey of the soul. Several other eminent Ishkan leaders, including His Holiness Loknath Maharaj, His Grace Anuttama Prabhu, guided me while I was driving on what to do in those final moments. <clears throat> at age 15, I arrived at hospital. The receptionist had my name registered as the priest who would allowed access. Many other senior Vaishnavas were assembled there. They graciously and selflessly blessed me to be with Maharaj, serve him in this uh, very special way. I was equipped with the necessary personal protective equipment and then escorted by the head nurse to the ward where Maharaj was staying. As the doctor, uh, I believe uh, uh, Al Mali was leaving the ward, I inquired about the current situation. Um, he replied that uh, Maharaj had just departed the world. Later on, the confirmation was that His Holiness Bhakti Chal Swami left the world at 8.34 a.m. I asked him his impression of Maharaj. He looked at me, said, saintly, very saintly. So I rushed inside the room at 8.37. My first impression was Maharaj was very joyful, incredibly serene. I could imagine that he was completely absorbed in seeing Krishna. Everything about him was spiritualized. Prabhupada's sweet bhajan was playing next to his right ear. I can still see that atmosphere was transcendental. Maharaj had a Bengali Bhagavad Gita, which he had personally translated on Srila Prabhupada's order, placed on his chest. To me, it seems as though he was still present. So I enthusiastically began to chant. I invoked the Swasti Bachanam, decided to chant various prayers. I read from Srimad Bhagavatam, recited the prayers of Gajendra, sang the Panchatatta Mantra, chant Hare Krishna. And all auspicious items were placed on Maharaj's body. <clears throat> Then, as Shripad Radhanath Maharaj, Loknath Maharaj, the others requested, I also started mentioning this to Maharaj. The Maharaj, thousands of devotees wants you to come back. You are their life and soul. They clearly wanted more of your association. But if that is the desire of Krishna and Srila Prabhupada that they are calling you. You have some service assignment elsewhere in the other spiritual realm. Then you can leave. Rest assured that Ishkan leaders will give cares like you did to your followers. And surely continue on the legacy projects, wonderful contribution to the movement.
So after that, I was chanting Brahma Sanghita, knowing that to be one of his Maharaj's personal favorite. And I started reciting again and again. And wait one while, for a while it was overwhelming. Knowing that they allowed me for 15 minutes audience with him. The nurse and the doctor knocked the door and told me it was time to leave. As I excited, I asked the head nurse about the experience with this saintly patient. She replied, she had never experienced anyone like this. I told her, he was a Messiah who had come to bless this hospital in this world. She seemed to understand that. I met with all the wonderful devotees back in the reception. And we all cried at the loss of it. Sholiness Bhakti Char Swami Maharaj to this world. It was sure all and not complete comprehensively, yet it was simultaneously very mysterious, magical, how the great soul leave the world. And it's inconceivable arrangement that the Lord makes to call back his confidential devotees. So I thought <clears throat> that time that Krishna saved Maharaj Parikshit from Brahmasra nuclear weapon while he, the Parikshit Maharaj was in the womb. Yet later, the same Parikshit Maharaj, uh, the same Supreme Lord, allowed him to die from snake bite when he got cursed. On the second occasion, the Lord had a bigger plan and service for Maharaj Parikshit that would bless generations to come. The Lord arranged for his departure so that the son of Sri Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, could arise to dissipate the darkness of Kali Yuga in the months, years, and decades to come. We will realize more and more how Bhakti Charuswami's life legacy, departure from this world, depends our connection with Krishna and inspires the awakening of pure devotion to the divine couple. I repeatedly offer my millions of obeisances to the dust of Srila Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, divine lotus feet, and pray that I can try to please Srila Prabhupada and our Guru Parampara as he did. Srila Bhakti Charu Maharaj will always remain my senior mentor, spiritual mentor, a beloved intimate servant of Srila Prabhupada, an exemplary inspirational leader within the Ishkan society, and the perfectly devoted disciple of his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Sai Prabhupada. If in this lifetime I can please Srila Prabhupada and our Guru Parampara even one millionth of what Srila Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj did, then I will consider my life a great success. I will end with this. Mancha kalpatur vishya kipas in the vayva chapatita nam pavan vishnavet purnamana. Thank you, Prabhus. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mr. Prabhu. Thank you so very, very, very much for 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 joining us tonight and to to share this. I, I think I think for many of us, this is something we we've been wanting to understand and, and hear. And um, you were in a unique position to, to, to be with um, uh, our Guru Maharaj Bhakti Chiru Swami um, at this time. And, and we're, we're, we're greatly indebted to you for, for, um, for, for serving in this way. Um, uh, I, I, birds can't even uh, say how much, how much we appreciate uh, what, what you've what, what you've done and what you've offered. And um, so, so our obeisance is to you. Um, and I, I think on, on if, if, I, if I may, on, on behalf of my God brothers and God sisters, we, we wanna thank you for, for, for your service to our Guru Maharaj. Thank um, you. 
So uh, um, we we thought it would be fitting to to end um, the the evening tonight with a with a a, a budget you're all familiar with, but but sung by someone who who just when at least at least for me and I think you all agree that that sings with such heart. Um, uh, I, I think really epitomizes much of what we talked about here tonight. And so uh, we've invited Prabir Prabhu to, uh, to, to sing tonight. And um, it'll be the, the, our, our last offering here um, in, in terms of our, our memorial for, for Bhakti Chu Swami. I, I want to thank all of you who have joined us tonight. Um, uh, thank everyone who's, who's, who's watching. Thank everyone who, who's participated by, by taking the time to, to, to be here and to, and to share. Um, and uh, and it's, it's just our great honor to have you and, and, and with much appreciation. Um, we, we, we thank you for being with us tonight. And so um, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Prabir Prabhu. And um, that, that'll actually conclude our evening tonight. Um, I, I hope this isn't the end, though, of, of more discussion and more um, time together to, to actually uh, uh, um, talk about what, what uh, uh, Bhakti Swami has meant to all of us. All of us. Um, and so, uh, so the, this, is, this is the memorial tonight, but, it, but I think there will be many, many, many more um, opportunities um, to, 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 to speak more, and I hope there are. But, uh, but again, th thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Um, Prabir Prabhu, thank you. And uh, Damodar, thank you so much for, 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 uh, for um, everything you've done to, to handle the technical side of this. So we, we couldn't have done it without you. So, um, so Prabir Prabhu, please. Jaya Nila Premodhana Koruna prochu Jayanila Premodhana Koruna prochu Hena prabhu Kotha gela Achajo Thaku Hena Prabhu Kotha Gela Achajo Thaku Kaha Mora Shukit Rupa Kaha Shanata Kaha Mora Shorup Rupa Kaha Shanata Kaha Dasha Raghunatha Utita Pava On Kaha Dasha Raghunatha Utita Pava Kaha Mora Vatta Juga Kaha Kobira Kaha Mora Vatta Juga Kaha Kobira Eka Kale Kotha Gela Gura Natara Eka Kale Kotha Gela Gura Natara Pashane Ku Ibo Matha Anale Poshiva 
शाने कुटीबो माता अनले पोशिव गौरांग गु मेरो निधि कोठा गेले पाव गौरांग गु मेरो निधि कोठा गेले पाव शिशवशोंगीरा शंगे जे कुला बीला शिशव शंगीरा शंगे जे कुला बीला ल मधन करुणा प्रचु जे आनिल मधन करुणा प्रचु जे आनिल मधन कोरुना प्रचु जयानिल प्रेम धन कोरुना प्रचु हेन प्रभु कोथा गेला आचार्य ठाकुर हेना प्रभु कोथा गेला आचार्य ठाकुर जय वैष्णव 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 जय वैष्णव जय भक्ति चारु स्वामी गुरु महाराज 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 जय जय प्रभु पार प्रभु पार प्रभु पार जय जय प्रभु पार जय जय प्रभु पार प्रभु पार प्रभु पाल जय जय प्रभु पाल नीताय गोर हरिबो 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 नीताय गोर हरिबो नीताय गोर हरिबो 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 नीताय गोर हरिबो जय 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 जय